is uh, to start uh, the recording of the meeting. And I'm moving, as you see, uh, the images of you, unfortunately, uh, down to my screen. You should see now uh, the first slide uh, of uh, our presentations here. Um, and yeah, a warm welcome uh, again to the colleagues. We are uh, very happy to welcome you to the third West Africa EU Alliance virtual workshop. Um, unfortunately, uh, Jackie Cardo from the Network of African Science Academies cannot join the meeting today. We both uh, are facilitating this meeting here. So I will be the moderator today of uh, this meeting alone. And uh, we should not uh, lose time. I suggest that we have a, a short round of uh, introduction right now. My name is uh, Stefan Hafner. I'm working for the German Aerospace Center, the project management agency, serving the German Federal Ministry of Education and uh, Research. Um, I am uh, part of the LEAP for FNSSA project and coordinating uh, the work package, which is uh, about to uh, co-design uh, a program and innovation management cycle model with you. And um, I would like uh, you all to introduce yourself briefly. Um, in this short round of introduction here, please state your name and the institution uh, you are working for. And I follow here the list as I do see it. So Mark, could you please begin? Okay, Mark seems not to hear me. His image is also frozen. So then perhaps later, Henning, please. Hello, my name is Henning Knipschild. I'm from BLE in Germany, um, and I'm part of the Leap for FNSSA workshop uh, project, and also of the two, which is together with other work packages organizing this set of. Thank you. Thank you very much, Natasha. Please. Hello, everyone. I'm Natasha Abu from. Benin in West Africa, and I'm working for an NGO named African Innovation Services, in short, AFRIS. And we are working with the LIP for FNSSA project for the collaborative platform. Thank you. Thank you very much, Natasha. Giuseppe, please. Giuseppe, can you hear us? No. Mark, are you back on board? Okay, both are not there. Yes, hello. Yeah. Please, Giuseppe, introduce yourself briefly. Hi, I'm Giuseppe. I'm from, uh, I work for the CIAM Bari. Uh, I'm a specialist in international relations, but uh, today I'm, uh, I'm uh, managing the technical issues uh, for uh, this meeting. Uh, welcome to everyone. Thank you very much for that. And thanks to the CM team uh, for uh, supporting us in that way very much. Mark, are you back? Would you like to introduce yourself briefly? Yeah. Please. It kicked me out. It kicked me out, but we can hear you. Introduce you uh, briefly okay. and- uh, Okay, I'm a colleague of Henning. <laughs> I'm a colleague of Henning at BLE but I'm also assisting AFRIS in the knowledge management um, part. Yes, so I'm happy to be here. Wonderful, thank you, Mark. Katerina, please. Switch on Hello, your microphone. Hello, everybody. Yes. Uh, my name is Katerina Kos. Um, I'm um, having uh, leading a small company based in Berlin um, with the aim of supporting European-African collaboration. And we also partner in uh, Leap for FNSSA. Nice to meet you here. Wonderful. Thank you, Katarina. I see Dora is there. Dora, would you like to introduce yourself, please? And also Jamil, uh, your colleague is there, as far as I can see. Please introduce both. Uh, yes. Yourself. Yes. My, my name is Dora Fiani. I have the pleasure to work within LEAP for FNSSA 
uh, work package two, uh, primarily uh, working on the other pilot, the North Africa EU Alliance. And uh, Mohsin Jamil uh, is uh, just next to me. He's the new uh, uh, officer on board of the team. And uh, besides this, I run an NGO in Egypt by the name of Knowledge Economy Foundation. And we work a lot in digital agriculture as well. Hello, this is Mohsin, Mohsin Gamil, uh, agriculture engineer, and working with Ms. Dora as an uh, assistant uh, researcher. Hello, everybody. Hello, welcome. Thank you very much, and welcome to the team. Thank you. The next is David Akana, please. Would you like to introduce yourself briefly? Absolutely. Uh, good morning, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, David Akana. Uh, I'm the Communications and Marketing Manager of Cora. Um, well, needless to introduce Cora because uh, I suspect that most of you already know it, uh, but um, we're based in Dakar and I'm based in Dakar as well. So good to be with you this morning. Wonderful. Pleasure to have you. Thank you. The next on my list is Krishan, please. Yes, hi. Thanks, Stefan. So my name is Krishan Binik. I'm uh, based at FARA, Forum for Agricultural Research in Africa. I'm here as the lead specialist uh, on capacity development, um, also involved in the implementation of the TAT program, its technologies for African agricultural uh, transformation. Um, I guess I'm, I'm, I've also had uh, some, ex well, some, experience, some experience, if you want, in terms of uh, developing regional information management systems and have a background in knowledge management. So uh, in this program at FARA, I kind of sh I'm sharing the, the involvement of FARA through my colleague, uh, Jonas Mugabe, and then also uh, a colleague of ours, Benjamin Abugri, who might join us today, but at least the three of us are involved in the discussions, the ongoing discussions. Thank you. Wonderful. Welcome, Krishan. Thank you. Uh, I don't have a proper list here of uh, the participants currently because uh, the images are moving. So I hope that I do not miss anybody. I see Isabel Polit from ANR. Please, would you like to introduce yourself, Isabel? Yes, <coughs> yes, of course. I am Isabel Polit. I am scientific manager at ANR, uh, l'Agence Nationale de la Recherche in France. And uh, I am in charge of several ERANET for the agency, and especially I am deputy coordinator for uh, LIPAGRI. And uh, we are engaged uh, in the lip 4 fnssa in the work package two, and especially in the task 2.4. Thank you very much, Isabel. Welcome. The next on my list here would be Johannes, please, from Sweden. Thank you, Stefan. Um, well, I was just coming from another meeting, so I'm a bit confused, but Johannes <laughs> um, uh, Dimitri is the name, uh, working at the Swedish University of Agricultural Sciences in Uppsala, Sweden, uh, involved in uh, WP3, uh, coordinating together with my colleague, uh, with ARC colleagues, Petronella, uh, is here with us today. And later on, I will present the work that we've been doing with the knowledge management system in lip for f and SSA, and also uh, kind of invite you to think together on uh, how we can use the uh, already done work, but also the planning for the future, let's say, of the KMS system. Uh, so I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ioannis. And I see you are twice here, but I didn't give you a second time now the floor. Oh, no. <laughs> Having a plan B in case a um, network crashes. So Always good. We keep this yeah. in mind as a principle. <laughs> um, up to, please. You are the next here on my list. Okay. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Abdul Tenkono. I work for Cora, for the same organization as Davids, and uh, we're based in Senegal. We have a membership of uh, in, uh, national research institution, institution from 23 countries of Western Central Africa. And uh, we are in charge of coordinating them, meaning essentially being the interface with the donor agencies researching for grants uh, that are put at the disposal of the institution for them to do the work on the ground. 
So that's basically what we do. Um, my non core of uh, uh, interest is uh, as a visiting professor at uh, KU Leuven in Belgium and uh, at the University of Ghana. So that's me. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Abdu, and welcome to you too. Uh, let me check who's next here on the list. Uh, Carlo, please. Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Hi, good morning, everyone. This is Carlo from Ciambari, leader of World Package 4. And um, here next to me, there is also my colleague, Gaetano Ladisa. And, um, Hi, everyone. Oh, Gaetano. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet to you, see too. See you. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I wish you all a, a very fruitful meeting. Wonderful. Thank, thank you very much. And again, uh, a very warm thank you to the CM team. You're doing a great job in supporting us here like that. Thank you so much. I see the next here on the list is uh, Luigi. Can you hear me? Yes, very well. Oh, okay. I am uh, Luigi Pellegrini. I am a student uh, of uh, international relations at the University of Bari, and now I'm doing a trainership uh, at uh, CA and Bari with uh, Gaetano Ladisa. Wonderful. Welcome, Luigi. Thank you for joining thank us. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jonas, Jonas Mugabe, please. This is the next. Yeah, uh, good morning. <clears throat> I'm Jonas Mugabe from FARA, Forum for Agricultural Research in Africa, based in Accra. As Christian said, yeah, we are involved in this project, LEAP for FNSSA, in almost all work packages, including the coordination of the project. Thank you. Thank you, and welcome to you, Jonas. Thank you for joining. The next on the list is Johnny Owusu Arthur. Good morning, thank you very much for this opportunity. I'm from Ghana, I work with CSR Jeffrey, and that I was married, my thing I call it. Thank you very much. Welcome, thank you very much for introducing yourself to us. Rose, please. Yeah, hello, good morning. I'm Rose Marie from CSIR Stepri based in Accra, Ghana. We are also part of the Leap for FNSSA project. We are co-leading the web package too with DLR. Thank you, Rose. Um, who's the next here on my list? Let me check. Uh, this is Lebo Khan, please. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Labohang Mpeje, uh, based at uh, the National Research Foundation in South Africa. Uh, we are also part of LIPO FNSSA team, Work Package 2. We are co-leading Task 2.1. Thank you. Thank you very much, Labohang, and welcome to the meeting. The next is Petronella Chaminuka, please. Hello, colleagues. Uh, good morning. My name is Petronella Chaminuka. I'm with the Agricultural Research Council in South Africa. And uh, we are also part of the LEAP for FNSSA program, uh, working on the knowledge management system with uh, Yanis, who introduced himself a while ago. And uh, we are looking forward to engaging with uh, knowledge and data management in the data managers in the West African region. And we are also excited to be able to share with you the work that we're doing today. Thank you. Thank you very much and a warm welcome to you, Petronella. Uh, the next is Prudence Makura, please. Makura and I'm with the National Research Foundation uh, in South Africa. And as Lebohan has explained, we are working, uh, we are also partners with him at the project. Thanks, Stefan. Thank you, Prudence, and welcome. Uh, the next is Insa Dayo. I can't read the rest of the name, it's not complete. Please, Insa. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Insa Dayo. I'm 
Okay, thank you, Stefan. My name is Dayo Gibaza Kosiga. I am uh, uh, in charge of the Department of Study and Research on Agri Input and um, Regulation in the City of Sahel, which is the one of the institution, specialized institution of the Permanent uh, Interstate Committee for Drought Control in the Sahel Seals. Uh, so on behalf of my director who could be, can be not to join the meeting today, I will represent the thesis. Thank you. Thank you very much, Insadai, and a warm welcome. Thank you. Um, the next on the list is Professor Ogunjobi. Okay, so good morning, um, Stefan, and to all our colleagues in the meeting. My name is Kende Ogunjobi. Um, I'm the Director of Research at the Waskal Competence Center based in Ouagadougou, Burkina Faso. Um, I think uh, my Executive Director will be joining uh, later if he's not yet online. But um, with or without him, I think um, Waskal is uh, well represented, you know, by me here today and another of my colleagues. Um, we are also working on the LEAP FNSSA project and um, WASCAL will be actively participating in the data and knowledge management group. So it's our pleasure being here this morning, Stefan. Back to you. Wonderful, Kehinde. Thank you. Warm welcome to you. Um, the next is uh, Belko Tialo, please. Belko, well, please activate your microphone. It's switched off as far as I can Hello, see. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, now we can hear you. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Belko Abdulaziz Diallo. I'm working at the Competence Center, because of Gonjubi. As a data management scientist, I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you very much for joining this meeting. Uh, and I think, if I'm not wrong, on my list, these were all participants so far. Is there anybody who did not introduce her or himself so far? If not, um, let's start our third West Africa EU Alliance uh, workshop. Um, we are very happy to welcome you here. And um, you see here in the slides to which we will refer uh, many times in the next month, uh, again, all the stakeholders that we are addressing with our work here in the West Africa EU Alliance. And we are about to establish this alliance. And I would like to remind you before we come to the agenda of today, that we as Leap for FNSSA, we are a project of African and European actors we are here to support this process of the West Africa EU Alliance. And this stands in a broader context, which is uh, the coming AU EU platform for research and innovation in food and nutrition security and sustainable agriculture. The whole Leap for FNSSA project is working towards this AU EU platform. And the West Africa EU Alliance. Uh, uh, shall become a part of it, and it is a pilot. We are um, uh, trying to figure out processes which are relevant uh, to form an alliance, to um, design uh, in a collaborative way uh, program cycles in which uh, partners can invest in research and innovation as well as in capacity building but also um, to organize a proper monitoring and evaluation mechanism and the learning mechanism. And um, in that sense, we are suggesting uh, to establish a so-called sorting house mechanism. And what this is in detail um, will be um, described a bit later, but let's uh, first uh, have a look what we are about to do today, what are the expectations, and then we can start with the presentations and we are then in the process already and we'll discuss the way ahead. So um, I will give you uh, in a few minutes just uh, an update. What is the state of affairs uh, in the process so far? 
and we will have to identify the chairs of the three working groups that are suggested. Thereafter, um, under the title Dialogues for Action, um, Prudence Makura from South Africa and Henny Knipschild from Germany uh, will give a short presentation and moderate a discussion about the coming West Africa EU Alliance Theory of Change and Impact Pathway, the abbreviation is TCIP, and uh, the WAIA Funders Network. Uh, which we have to form so that at the end of the project next year in October, we have a solid basis to form um, not only uh, the further process or to maintain the further process in the West Africa EU Alliance, but also in the overall uh, AU EU portal. Um, thereafter, um, we will have a short presentation uh, by uh, Katerina Kuss from Germany, um, supported by Dorafiani from uh, Egypt, about uh, the VAIA Innovation Hubs and very much in general the communication concept that we are uh, about to design uh, together. Um, and thereafter, um, Petronella Chaminuka from South Africa and Ioannis uh, uh, Dimitriou from Sweden uh, will address the issue of data and knowledge management uh, in the West Africa EU Alliance. But they, of course, will also refer to their work um, for the overall AU EU platform, since they designed already a project database uh, in the project. Um, and a knowledge management system, which is suggested to be a part of the overall knowledge management and communication framework that we are working towards. And then uh, we will close uh, the meeting, just uh, clarify what are the next steps, what are the plans and uh, what has to be prepared for uh, starting the work in the working groups. And then hopefully at a quarter past uh, Two, uh, we will be ready. This is Central European time, so uh, it's a quarter past one in the UTC time zone. Um, let me come briefly uh, to the expected uh, outputs today. Uh, as I said already, we want to identify with you the chairs of the three uh, YER working groups and what it means to chair will be explained later in my presentation here. And we would like uh, to have a more detailed uh, shared vision of the way ahead in the VAIA region. And this means mainly we talk a bit more about uh, the sorting house mechanism that is suggested uh, based on the program and innovation management cycle model, as well uh, as the dialogues for action, which is a specific phase in the program cycle. With regard to the sorting house mechanism, we will discuss uh, the theory of change and impact pathway, where we, which we will work upon in uh, one working group, but also about the stakeholders communication concept. The details also will come later, what we are doing there, and the data and knowledge management process. These are the expected outputs of uh, today's meeting. And let me jump with you uh, in this uh, first introduction and, and uh, updating you about the state of affairs where we are. So the suggestion here uh, uh, to, to build the uh, uh, alliance um, requires several steps and understanding of what this alliance could be. So we have um, uh, a big diversity of, of actors, but also uh, of themes and, and processes in the West Africa and EU region. And the idea here is to co-develop um, mechanisms for this alliance. And one mechanism is the sorting house mechanism. And we will work in the three suggested working groups on this sorting house mechanism. We will uh, have to establish a funding mechanism this is mainly done under the, the title Dialogues for Action, which is addressing uh, the question of how to mobilize resources, how and where to invest in research and innovation and capacity building in kind, but also with uh, very concrete funding. And uh, the third pillar, so to say, um, of the West Africa EU Alliance is um, the support of the communication between end users of knowledge. 
So we do see this as a circular communication. It's not about uh, a one-way road from uh, researchers uh, to end users of knowledge. It's about a circular communication so that uh, scientists, for example, are raising the right questions uh, in their work and that, uh, for example, farmers, NGOs or decision makers or funders um, have the right information from the scientific world at hand to make their decisions. So in that sense, we are addressing here a, a, a network and a mechanism for circular communication and how we will do that. That's something that we uh, will work together here. Um, building the sorting house mechanism and the sorting house uh, network um, uh, is an issue that we suggest to address with uh, three different steps. And this um, is mirroring the three working groups. So first, um, we want to uh, develop a theory of change uh, with impact pathways. And these are three steps. So the first step is to uh, develop a, a situation uh, analysis. Uh, we will come later a bit to the details what this means, uh, because there are many analyses already around. Uh, we know that already, it's not only an assumption. And um, then from this situation analysis, goals will have to be defined for the region so that roadmaps can be defined and desired impact pathways. And once this is done and funders are included, um, we will have to address uh, a card, um, the design of a concept for monitoring uh, evaluation and learning. The other pillar is to develop a communication concept. And this has uh, two aspects, a theoretical aspect, uh, which will have to address who are the stakeholders. And uh, you remember the first slide that I showed today, the green one with the many stakeholders. We will have to have a closer look uh, to that who are the stakeholders in the YEA region. Uh, this is the theoretical uh, um, uh, part, but also the practical part is to identify exactly which farmers, which innovators, which uh, farmers organizations will have to be addressed in the region. So namely the institutions, the person who are the contact person. This is something that we would like to find out and, and to fix in a communication concept. Um, which will serve um, hopefully next year also the discussion with the funders where and how to invest and who to be involved. The third pillar is about the collaboration um, in the field of data management and knowledge management. We are well aware that these are two different spheres but they are closely linked and we have uh, already uh, some uh, expertise here from Farah, Christian, you are uh, responsible for, uh, for knowledge management issues uh, in FARA, so we can build on something uh, already uh, even on a, on a process. Um, so this will be the pathway uh, in this field of the collaboration of data and knowledge managers. We will try to find out what are the interfaces to be established or to be maintained where they exist already and how to build a, a, a strong or stronger network uh, uh, in, in that field. And um, these three pillars will be accompanied uh, in parallel uh, with the preparation of the dialogues for action, which will finally happen next year, hopefully, if we have uh, the concept uh, for the communication at hand, if we have a theory of change uh, and impact pathways at hand, and also clarify the interfaces between the data and knowledge managers. Um, so, uh, I, I was already, I will, I will not go further into the details here. I explained it already. That's the, the task of working group number one in the West Africa EU Alliance to design the theory of change and impact pathway. Just as a reminder here, um, the theory of change and impact pathway is consisting of three elements. Uh, they are listed here. I explained it already. A challenge is then together with the funders, and, and it has to be done with the funders. Uh, once the TCIP has been defined, we will have to find indicators and a concept uh, and to design a concept for monitoring and evaluation and learning. So this is just a brief reminder. We will go into the details about that in the working group uh, number one. And we still hope that uh, 
next week we can organize uh, the first meeting of the working group to introduce there more in detail. We have working documents for the working group number one. There are four working documents uh, suggested. The first one is dedicated to the situation analysis, the second one to the roadmaps and impact pathway. And then at a certain stage, um, the situation analysis and the roadmaps uh, and impact pathways will be merged into one document. And this then is the TCIP document. The first two documents then will be uh, obsolete because they are fed into this third document. And the fourth document is the monitoring and evaluation and learning concept abbreviated with MEL concept. For working group two about uh, the VAEA communication concept, as I said, we, are, we have to identify theoretically who are the stakeholders. And there are many different perspectives on that. Uh, we were quite surprised on that. And we have to list that simply, which different perspectives are there, which stakeholders should be listed in theory to be addressed. But we do not want to stop there. We try to be very practical. In this communication concept, then, we will um, be concrete in that way that we name their innovation uh, uh, institutions and, and actors to be addressed and also uh, define how they will have to be addressed in the process of uh, research and um, innovation in the program uh, cycle. Um, here again, also as a, as a reminder, here's this, uh, uh, this figure with all the stakeholders, which is more um, a symbol. It symbolizes the stakeholders. This is far away from being complete, but just to give a rough idea um, which stakeholders we so far have in mind, and also uh, a preliminary uh, solution to organize the communication in, in sorting house hubs. Uh, but this, is, uh, this has to be discussed and has to be in line with the overall AU, EU platform that we are designing in Leap for FMSSA for um, the AU and the EU. The working documents in working group two, are, are there are just two. One is the communication concept, the document in which we put uh, in um, all that I have said, the theoretical approach and the practical approach for communication between the stakeholders in the region. And we have um, a second document, which is, um, we call it a management table in Excel format, is the sorting house network. So who are the stakeholders, namely, and with email addresses or phone numbers, um, whatever is possible, we will have then uh, a proper database uh, to address the stakeholders according to the concept. We will have to follow here uh, also the European rules of data protection, um, that's a, a difficult exercise, but we will find uh, solutions for that. In working group two about the collaboration of data and knowledge managers, um, as I said already, uh, we will build there in particular on the process uh, from FARA. We have from the project side, and again, we are serving this process. It's not the other way around that you are requested to uh, support this project. We support you. So in the project, um, uh, later, uh, Petronella and Ioannis uh, will present their work in Leap for FNSSA towards a project database um, and uh, other approaches in the field of data and knowledge managers um, and we will work in the working group first on, on, a, on a networking process to get the relevant uh, partners on board. And um, we will talk then uh, about the interfaces uh, for the future collaboration. And this will be fixed in a working document, the first one. And the second document uh, is the same like in the communication concept. It's, a, uh, it's an Excel file in which we try to collect uh, the addresses and, and the institutions uh, where data and knowledge management um, uh, uh, is, is, is executed. Uh, so um, we have already uh, in a, a version four of the draft terms of uh, reference for these three working groups. And um, 
we got uh, uh, lots of feedback. You see it already also here. It's, it's not that clear because the quality of this figure is not that nice, but however, uh, we got many feedback. Uh, thanks a lot uh, for that. So these terms of reference are close to the finalized. We have to fix uh, the question who will chair the working groups and then we can finalize the terms of reference. And uh, before we come to this question of sharing these working groups, I would like to remind you briefly about the suggested timeline. So uh, we hope very much that uh, next week we can organize uh, three separate workshops uh, between those uh, who will contribute in these workshops. If this is not possible, then so be it. It would be the first week of March, but we are a bit short in time indeed, because if you want to make use of uh, the resources from Leap for FMSSA, we uh, will end in October 2022. So therefore, um, we try to make sure that uh, we can benefit uh, the most from this short period of time and the resources that we have to support such processes. In July, then, we plan uh, separate workshops um, of these three working groups um, to discuss uh, the documents that the working group worked in virtually. And I come later uh, to the details about how to work on that. We also have a very good solution for that. In December 2021, this year, we will uh, uh, organize a joint workshop uh, so where quite um, many participants might want uh, to, to join us. We want to discuss there the state of affairs with regard to these uh, documents, uh, which is the draft TCIP, it's the draft communication concept, and also the draft um, document of the data knowledge managers about potential interfaces and the collaboration in the future. In, at this time, in December this year, we plan to include latest, if not earlier, also funders, um, because the earlier the funders are involved in the development in particular of the TCIP, um, the better this could work together. And it's more likely than that the funders also would um, uh, make use of this instrument and follow uh, a program cycle with uh, the documents, uh, with the basis that we are uh, working towards here in this process. In June next year, um, the finalization of these documents is envisaged. Again, this is the TCIP, the communication concept and interfaces and collaboration in data and knowledge management. In August uh, the, uh, next year, there will be a final workshop. And currently, the idea is um, to have this together with the overall final workshop of the Leap for FMSSA project. And we are planning to have there um, perhaps a half a day workshop focusing on the West Africa EU alliance. But um, we will have to figure this out with the colleagues and with you. Uh, how we will uh, organize this in August next year. So this is roughly the timeline. Please have this in mind. And um, we hope that at the end of this meeting today, we will get some more um, uh, addresses in person who will work in the workshop so that we can start, if not next week, then the week thereafter with our work um, in, in this sense here. So. Before we come to this question, uh, who will chair the working groups, um, I will just briefly summarize uh, what uh, does it mean to chair a working group. Um, first, it means to moderate uh, the group meetings and you will be supported uh, by us in doing so. So the logistics is something that we take care about the chair of the working group will just have to uh, discuss with us the agenda of the meeting and how to move forward uh, with regard to working on the documents. The moderation of the working documents will be organized in AFRIS. And I, I stop here briefly my presentation slide and hand over um, to Mark because uh, Mark and Natasha who's also here uh, uh, are working with uh, AFRIS and they will briefly explain uh, what it means to moderate a working document in AFRIS. So Mark, please, uh, the floor is yours. Activate your screen so that we can see um, your, uh, your screen. 
Okay, do you see it, my screen? Yes. Okay, um, actually uh, we propose to the project uh, platform, which is an interface for everybody to meet and to exchange. This platform is provided by AFRIS to integrate a bit all kinds of projects that work between Africa, Europe and globally. So it's not just for LeapProfits and SA, it's also for Cup per Mill, which is a big initiative on carbon sequestration, nutrition networks. So there's various projects that work in the same area that use it. And this creates also an effect of synergy. So now I'm going to click on the LeapFry. Now this is what your space looks like. You have welcome to the coordination section. We'll change the title. So I must say we set this up yesterday uh, for you for this event. And basically what you have is you have coordination with spaces. So there's one for the lead and one for the exchange between AFRIS and, um, and uh, the project. Then we have an area for West Africa, which has three spaces, uh, four spaces, one for the West Africa, three spaces, which are rooms for West Africa. Now you see a bit the latest document I've been working on is the, the, is the virtual workshop uh, from today. So this is on West Africa. And this is the recent uh, updates that I've made. And we have a document here and this is where it becomes interesting. <laughs> um, I will push this aside. So uh, if I edit this document, this is the minutes, this is the, the today's agenda, which, uh, which uh, Stefan has sent to me. And you see there are several persons have been Mark, Libogang, Henning, Natasha, we're all of these documents and we can all write simultaneously. So it's a bit like, you know it from Google Docs, where we can work on these documents together. And this uh, makes a lot of time saving because then the week finishes, we can all save it. Uh, if I make an update, just to show you another features. Um, if I say um, I'm here and I say clear presentation, I can make inline comments just to show you a few of these features that it has. Uh, uh, spelling, Opla, my another spelling error. I'm making a spell. Save. Now the author gets notified and we can start a discussion on the item. So it has a lot of features of exchange and interaction, which Word doesn't provide. And I think especially useful uh, people not being at the spot on the same time. You can always come here and work on a document and you don't have to worry about work version management. I think this is where I will stop. I will just show you a bit. An important thing is um, page history you see that this document already, we have version, we're working on version eight now. Mm -hmm. So it's constantly keeping track of versions and you can pair versions. So it's a very cutting edge platform that allows us really to work on documents and not to have to send around emails all the time, but we have one spot to come here. Mm -hmm. So I think that's for the moment. I think I will work a lot with Lebogang and, and uh, Prudence and uh, Stefan and everybody so with our first team, and I'm looking forward with Christian and with all the knowledge managers to make best use of this tool. Just see it as a tool that belongs Thank to you. you. And this is the objective of our first to provide this tool. And lucky enough, we have a good license agreement with the providers of the software and we can invite everybody to take advantage of this instrument. Yes. Okay. So we're happy Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mark. Allow me I to, think, uh, you to will share tell a bit my... What it goes. Yes, to share my screen. Uh, yes. Thank yes. you so much. Yes. I'm I'm very very happy uh, to have you on board. And uh, colleagues, um, uh, it is for all of us in a way. Yes, we change our behavior. We are not sending emails anymore. We are working on the platform. But um, to me, I worked uh, in in other projects also on on platforms like that. Um, that's really a win. So we, uh, it, it, the work will be way more easier for all of us. And um, 
Mark uh, already promised that we will have a, a proper introduction uh, into this instrument so that the working groups uh, can easily uh, join the platform, work on the documents there. And I'm sure at the end they will agree it's way more easier, it's way easier uh, than we worked um, in the past. So thank you very much for this short uh, introduction, Mark. Um, Another point uh, for chairing the working group uh, is to present uh, the state of affairs uh, of the group in, in the meetings and in public workshops. As I showed you already in the calendar, we will have also a joint workshop, hopefully in December, where um, the results from the working groups will have to be presented. So this will be the job of, of the chair to give a 10 minutes presentation or even longer, it depends on how we uh, design uh, these workshops, and of course, to maintain uh, the good spirit of our collaboration here. So um, in this sense, um, I think my, now my slides are having a own life. I would like um, to also with regards to the time, because we only have seven more minutes here for this part of our meeting, the question uh, to you, to those who are here in the working group number one, the question is who will chair, uh, chair the group? And, and please raise uh, your hands uh, or, or just say it loudly now. I cannot see the chat now. And um, another point is you see here now only representatives from SILS and, and CORAF, which is great. We would also need to have someone from ECOWAS and from WASCAL here, please. But we also would need European partners. And you are all requested, please, to uh, state those European partners that you want to have on board in this working group. And this is not only a question to Europeans, this is also a question to Africans as well as uh, the other way around. So you are kindly requested after this meeting, send um, to us, uh, to me and Jackie, uh, an email with a further person who should join this working group. But for now, who is, uh, is willing to chair the working group number one, the VAEA theory of change and impact pathways? What one person would be enough? <laughs> Is there anybody volunteering, please? Hello, please, please, Stefan. Yes, I'm. I'm Dayo. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think that. Uh, the observation of the when I look at the this table is that the most of uh, participants in this group are from SILS. And uh, uh, now I, I, I don't discuss with my Dr. Ebe is uh, the, the general director of uh, INSA. Paul Wedraugo is the deputy exec, uh, executive secretary of SILS. And Sangare is my colleague. I think that for the seal size, we have to to uh, to have consultation to to know if we can chair this group or not. Yeah. And okay, you want to discuss that internally, but you you think that uh, one of you could chair this group? Is is that the message? No, no, it's not the message because we don't have any um, discussion about this point. Uh, we know that uh, all the the, the participants of this will contribute, mm -hmm. but not for the the, the chairing. Okay, this is not the message. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, you will discuss that. Um, okay, I hoped indeed uh, to, to move on quickly that today somebody could raise her or his hand um, for, for this role. 
Uh, so uh, uh, allow me, uh, I, I, I have this of course in mind. Is there anybody who spontaneously today could already say, I will do that? Okay, if this is not the case, uh, and um, it's, it's a bit a difficult situation for me now, because indeed, if you need to discuss that, uh, you, you have to have uh, the time to do so, but please be reminded, we don't have that much time. Um, so uh, take this time uh, and, and discuss that. Um, it would be very much appreciated uh, by the colleagues here, if uh, one from SILS, um, could uh, uh, take this role. Um, we will organize this uh, meeting. We will share a, a, a full request uh, to identify the day and time for the first workshop. And latest then, we, we definitely must identify the chair of this group because otherwise we, we cannot organize this, uh, this process. Yeah, so let's keep that for now as the state of affairs please also add other person um i'm still waiting for feedback and i don't know whether the colleague from ecowas is today here there are colleagues from waskal um it would be best if from at least uh, that, that at least one person from each of these organizations would participate in the group and um, then yeah let's identify the chair of the group uh, in the coming workshop Let's come to uh, working group number two uh, the, about the communication concept. So here again, uh, a list of person who um, highlighted that uh, they want to contribute in this group. Again, we have here uh, SILS uh, um, and we have uh, Korov uh, colleagues. Thank you very much for that. We still have a gap here uh, with regard to Waskal and, and ECOWAS and um, others might, uh, might come, but also European partners. So in case uh, the person here in this meeting uh, are those who are not today, uh, who are not here today, but who uh, wants to contribute, uh, please let us know. Uh, I will share an email with that regard again after this meeting. Who uh, in, in Europe do you want uh, to, to have as a partner in this working group? Is anybody uh, in this meeting here who wants to chair the working group number two about the communication concept for the region? And please interrupt me. I cannot see if you are raising hands or so. I'm, I cannot check the chat currently. Uh, I'm so to say blind. <laughs> Hello, Stefan. Yes, Rose, please. My hand, my hand is up. Yeah, just uh, some clarification. At this stage, we need to be very clear what type of organizations we are looking at. Because so far, I only hear of three, three or four, Waskal, Seals, Korak, and Farah. Is it what, I, I want to know what kind of organizations are we looking at? And is there opportunity for us to reach out to other similar organizations? Or we are limiting everything to these three or four organizations at this stage? Otherwise then they automatically become the chest. I mean, one organization for each, each, each group. Mm -hmm. That's the way I see it. Thank you for this question, Rose. And um, uh, my perspective is uh, this is not limited to these organizations. We were happy to have these organizations uh, in our first West Africa EU Alliance meeting um, because of their importance in the region. And this was the starting point. Um, the idea here and of the overall sorting house mechanism and the sorting house network is meant to grow a network. So definitely, yes, other organizations could uh, join this process. Of course, we must be careful um, uh, whether the working group will remain manageable. 
uh, what we need for now are committed person of committed institutions who are willing to, to move this path together until next year and, and work together on the already stated documents. So in case, um, and I'm afraid there is nobody today who wants to take the role of chairing this group. And again, um, please understand, this is uh, our all process. Mm -hmm. We are not asking you to serve the leap for uh, FNSSA project. It is about developing um, a mechanism for the West Africa EU region that will serve the investments in research and innovation and capacity building from next year on. So I think this should be already incentive enough uh, for us to invest here uh, time and energy. We will come later in the dialogues for action to this question, what are the incentives uh, of, of this process? So I will ask the last time, is anybody here who wants to chair working group number two, the communication concept? Uh, Stefan, this is Abdul speaking from yes. Cora. Um, uh, it's a bit of an embarrassing situation, as you say. Um, um, and uh, I would like to suggest that uh, my organization could share the groups uh, for the development of uh, uh, different elements, but uh, very quickly we'll need to decide within the group who is going to be uh, the standing chair. So uh, that's what I would like to offer. Okay, stage. great. And uh, Abdul, thank you very much, Abdul. This, this sounds great. Uh, therefore, I suggest indeed we postpone this decision uh, until we have the first workshops with uh, uh, the working groups, because I assume that uh, also for the next working group on data and knowledge managers, um, we might not have uh, a chair uh, who is willing to take this role, um, but I, I, I will not miss the opportunity to ask for that. Is there somebody? Yeah. Hello, hello Steven. This is uh, Mogunjo. This is Kende. Yes. Hi, Kende. Okay. Thank you very much, um, Steven. Um, also, I've been following uh, the meeting and um, especially on the issue of uh, taking responsibility. You know, it's, <laughs> it's quite uh, tough sometimes, but um, you know, we just have to, you know, take the boom by the horn and get, um, and, and, you know, and get volunteers. Now on the working group three on data and knowledge, um, I want to suggest that WASCA, uh, I want to volunteer that WASCA uh, with our experience also in data management um, if we could take the, the lead. But um, again, I can see that we have four uh, representatives from sales, one from CORAF, one from uh, Waskala at the time being. Um, if we go by democracy, <laughs> will, it be, will it be still okay for Waskal to lead? But if that is okay, if we are not, um, if, it's on, um, if it's on experience and competence, and I think um, if that is the case, I want to suggest that uh, Dr. Belko from Waska um, could take the lead. Thank you. Back to you. Mm -hmm. Thank you uh, very much, Kendi. Stefan? Yes, Mark, please. Uh, from the side of AFRES, I think uh, you pointed it out in your slides that uh, AFRES will really actively or uh, proactively collaborate with the uh, chairs of the different working groups. So, um, and if it is difficult and we have to move quickly, Afris wouldn't mind just to, to work directly with the coordinators of this project to at least for an interim phase until you have uh, solidified and people feel more, have more trust also in the support Afris is giving. So it is not too much weighing on their uh, already very busy schedules. Yes. So I think don't be too much afraid. I think uh, you have a strong partner on board and who will uh, be very proactive in, in, in populating this platform and the communication with um, network members. So you are assisted. I just wanted to tell you that this is not just technical assistance, it is also about communication and uh, knowledge management, at least for the project documents. Yes. So 
Yeah, I just wanted to stress that, yes, to make it a bit more easy for people to come yeah. forward and be courageous. Yeah, thank you very much, Mark, uh, for, for this reminder. And um, indeed, you have AFRIS, you have Leap for FNSSA there as a support. And it is, um, as already stated, it's about just moderating this working group. It is, uh, we are all together here. We have to take a, a step back. We are not... Um, um, just working here for the interest of our institution, we are working here towards um, a bigger approach. So um, if this was uh, Kehinde, uh, what was, was that a, a, a confirmed statement uh, that uh, uh, Mr. Belko Diallo will, uh, will chair the group or would you like to discuss that with him? And uh, in the first uh, workshop, uh, you will make this decision just for clarification. Um, uh, I think the, uh, 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 well, let me quickly inform you that, um, of course, I've had a quick discussions with him um, just before I nominated him. And the, I mean, I'm the director of research in Waskal and Dr. Diallo is our head of department of the data management department in Waskal. So, um, and it's all I'm capable to lead with him. And is but just further in a larger forum for the um, in the group, um, that could still be that could be that could be a welcome idea too. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I see Krishan, you also yeah. have a comment here. <laughs> yeah, maybe I just I just like to come in now that we've gone through the three different groups and uh, and the uh, representations and we've had some suggestions. I would like to. Maybe again, what Mark has said is also to come in to say that Farah is here to support the, the three, uh, well, the, th the three groups and the chairs. I, I'm, I'm already you know, proposing that we could leave this meeting with a suggestion perhaps that um, maybe we could have the group one under, the, under uh, chairmanship, a proposed chairmanship of someone from SILS. On the second one, because we have Dr. Tanguano and uh, Richard also, uh, sorry, David is here with us, whether they would feel, uh, you know, okay, if in the, with the support of the group here to, to volunteer to take the lead on the group on the number two, and we leave the third one to Waskal, since we have a volunteer and we have three, we have people with the right um, profiles to be leading the discussions or to be to be facilitating the discussions and again we all we always say that um you know chairing doesn't mean that you do all the work but i think well we have to be realistic that yes you will have to drive and you'll end up having to push a little bit but this is an effort where we are saying that it belongs to the west african region and i, I would be glad to see that we have the three three west african organizations taking the lead on each one of these groups and all of us are there to support. Now, I would quickly add to say that as the first role of the chair or as the first role of the group to support the chairs, we should be able, as Rose said, to bring more people on board into, into the discussion that we feel can contribute to the evolution of these three um, uh, TCIPs. So, uh, so that, that is my proposal to the group uh, that we, we kind of leave this meeting with a, with an indication and a, and a kind of a, a recommended or a proposal from the group that we might identify a chair for group one from SILS, identify a chair from for group two from uh, CORAF, and maybe a chair from the third one from Waskal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you very much, Krishan, and also in particular for uh, confirming the support from FARA. Um, you are also a Leap for FNSSA partner. I think this is a good suggestion and it leaves uh, enough space for discussion um, as it uh, was suggested before the next uh, workshops. And then in the next workshop, we will fix that. I take note that uh, there was a very concrete suggestion uh, from Waskal for um, chairing our uh, working group number three and then uh, we will clarify some details uh, in the next workshops and uh, Mark uh, already confirmed that uh, he's ready together with uh, Natasha to introduce to Afris and uh, I'm sure this will be a smooth process then. Thank you very much.
Yes, sir. Yes. Just to confirm what I say from Cora, mm -hmm. we're willing to take on that role for the group two. Wonderful. Uh, maybe you can hear from David directly. Mm -hmm. Great, wonderful. Thank you, Abdu, for that. Hello, um, hello, Stephen. Yes. Dayo, Dayo, I have a quick uh, con uh, conversation with uh, my director, and uh, he agrees that we you can put now seals for work group one, and uh, after we can give you the one speci specific name for the person who will chair. Okay, wonderful, great. Thank you. Thank you for this positive feedback. I'm happy for that. Good, colleagues then, um, and with regard to the time, we are a, a bit over the time now. Um, let me keep it uh, short. Um, what we would need uh, from uh, all here now are further addresses of further working group members, in particular, some European working group members. Um, the groups should not be overloaded uh, with persons. So I would say 30 person for a group is uh, at this stage too much. Um, we will follow an inclusive path with a, perhaps a, a peer review of the documents uh, later. So because inclusivity is one of the principles that we are suggesting here for the working groups, there shouldn't be too many in these groups, but at the current stage, they are not enough uh, in the working group. So please send us addresses for further working group members uh, from the African, also from the European side. And um, that's it. <laughs> and um, I suggest then, if there are no further questions, I took note of your uh, comment, Krishan, uh, in, in the chat briefly with regards to the theory of change and uh, impact pathway. Um, we will come uh, in the working group uh, to that issue, what it means to come from a situation analysis to uh, goals, roadmaps, and desired impact pathways. So this is definitely something that we will uh, work on. So uh, let me now um, hand over, please, uh, to the next session about Dialogues for Action, about the coming uh, via TCIP and the via Funders Network. And as far as I understood, uh, Henning will present. So Henning, please, the floor is yours. I stop sharing my screen now and please activate your screen for your presentation. Thank you, Henning. Okay. Um, I tried to share. can see it. Wonderful. So um, thank you very much. Um, BLE and NRF in South Africa are in charge of task in, in a task in LEAP by FNSSA, which um, has the objective to launch the dialogues for action. Now, what do we mean by this and what our ideas here to um, contribute to the discussion. Um, today we want to talk uh, about involvement of actors to form an FNSSA alliance, alliance for Dialogues for Action. And that means at the end of the day, we are very interested to jointly launch research and innovation. So we have the workshops now, we will have the discussion groups, we're developing an environment to attract more partners. And that is also one of the foci which we have. We want to attract and involve other actors, especially also funders, and also new partners from other nations which are not so actively involved in our networks. This is one of the re reasons why we came also to the subregion West Africa, because we saw that in our projects, Leap for FNSSA and Leap Agri, West Africa is not that uh, strongly represented. So we think it's a good place to start here, especially because uh, the infrastructure is very good uh, in terms of aura, research, uh, networks, and uh, we want to get them in, on board. And for this reason, we want to 
discuss with you Hoyt today the identification of incentives to be presented for acquisition. So um, you all know this PIMC uh, model and you see the blue arrow, that's the dialogues for action. So we will develop in the other components, we will develop concepts for sorting houses and systems improvement for communication and knowledge management. And at the end of the day, we want to set up an alliance to jointly launch the research in the Dialogues for Act. Um, I will now present you some ideas about the identification of incentives to, present in, to be presented for acquisition of partners. And the vision is actually that we have an idea about the incentives uh, to be actually uh, introduced into the working groups afterwards and that we in a, at a later stage develop a vision to jointly launch research and innovation and that we first see how we can involve funders and have an acquisition of new partners and nation. So if we just start from the beginning, you all know our actors whom we would like to integrate into our work, who we want to invite to the platform. We have the farmers and entrepreneurs and innovators. We have the end users, the consumers, who are the target groups of FNSSA. We have the funders. We have actors from research and innovation. We have governmental institutions, uh, decision makers. We have NGO, NGOs and we have knowledge brokers and actors from capacity development. So uh, the question is, what do these actors actually expect? What are the scenarios actually which we can expect uh, to, to define incentives? So what we did, we set up a small matrix with the actors. You see them in the blue row on top and in the brownish reddish row on the left. So in the different fields of the matrix, we just matched uh, the demand which we see um, towards the different actors. And of course, this is completely open for discussion. This just wants to open the discussion on the incentives. So what could be the demand? If we start on the far left, it is of course clear that uh, the, the the end user, the consumer, has uh, a demand towards farmers, entrepreneurs, prisoners, and innovators to have a provision with valuable products. So that's based the basics. But then um, we already, uh, if we have a look, what do the actors in the blue lane have uh, expectancies towards the actors in the red lane? If we have a look at the demand of the funders towards farmers and entrepreneurs, as well as what is the demand of research and innovation towards entrepreneurs, you see that uh, the demand is to have feedback on change required, to have a feedback on research demand. And this is probably also one of the big topics for decision makers. For the um, NGOs and the uh, knowledge managers, the, uh, the knowledge brokers, capacity development actors, uh, they see in the farmers a partner to achieve change and a target group for action. So this is more or less the expectancy towards the end user and the consumer. And we shaded it uh, with different colors and you see it's more or less uh, the same expectancy we see here. Um, so what do the actors expect from the funders? From the funders, and uh, I'm working for a funding management organization, so, so we, we do quite some th thinking about this. Uh, uh, people expect that uh, the funders provide a framework facilitating research, but also knowledge management and outreach. We normally concentrate quite a lot of facilitating research, but uh, we, we see a lot of need uh, 
to have mechanisms to create networks, to set up partnering models, and to um, have more concepts and uh, pillars to facilitate knowledge management and outreach. So I think this is the overall expectancy towards the funders. Um, what do the actors expect of research and innovation? We expect that researchers and uh, innovation actors provide research-based recommendations to implement innovation. Um, what are the expectancies of, of the actors towards decision makers? It is again to provide a framework for facilitating change and innovation. So on one side, of course, the decision makers provide the funds to, to facilitate research, but also to open the ground to, to facilitate change. Um, the NGOs are very much seen as partners to achieve change, um, partners to organize outreach and the link to entrepreneurs and end users. Um, and we have the knowledge brokers and the capacity development actors and they are the ones who provide information in adequate formats as input into knowledge and development. So here we have these people who, who provide policy briefs. We have question answer service for farmers who work with the NGOs to um, provide input for the knowledge management. And of course, um, these knowledge brokers for the funders and the researchers are uh, partners to support outreach. So this is the approach we took. We listed them again uh, in according to the groupings. And we think that these topics uh, could actually be reflected in the three working groups. So for example, if we have uh, a topic like um, Mm, provide information in adequate formats as input to knowledge development. This is probably a topic which can be taken up in two of the working groups, one on communication and the other one on knowledge management and data management. What we now did is we said, okay, now we have the uh, demand. What kind of this incentives can we develop from this, and this is again open to discussion. So uh, we think that uh, the, the, the incentives uh, for farmers and entrepreneurs and innovators would be that uh, the dialogue with these actors is assured within our activities, that the demand is identified on the, on the basis of this dialogue, and that knowledge transfer is assured. And um, we also think that the farmers, entrepreneurs, uh, but also the end users um, uh, expect that they can, as target groups, be involved. And uh, um, I think it's also important for, uh, for other actors, um, such as researchers and funders, that uh, we have access to these target groups. Mm. The, the funders themselves, uh, of course, want to launch a, a framework which facilitates research and uh, knowledge management and outreach. And we believe that if the platform we are creating are facilitating these objectives, that we find uh, partners who would like to contribute to our activities here in West Africa. Um, what could the researchers and innovators um, expect? Um, we think that if we jointly develop a theory of change, then we have lots of linkages to different research institutions, which allow us to invite the researchers to contribute to this theory of change and impact pathway. And which allows us to underline the logic of our joint activity. Um, what do the decision makers expect? 
the decision makers um, expect that uh, research-based recommendations are communicated as an input to their decisions. And we have decision makers in our network. We have them in the ministries. We have them uh, at the HLPD level. And we think it's important to communicate to them. NGOs which participate are looking uh, for partners for effective research and implementation. So um, they're, they're trying to work with networks who allow to link up uh, target groups uh, with, with researchers um, to allow uh, access to recommendations in uh, usable formats and to have uh, communication paths which facilitate this communication. The knowledge brokers probably expect um, uh, to, to, to have a structure, find a structure in a platform where they can uh, easily come in with their work to provide adequate formats as input to knowledge management. So if we cluster these um, topics again, uh, these could be the incentives. It would be very good to discuss in the working groups about the incentives, because in the next step, we have to promote uh, the participation to our platform. And uh, another topic is what are the main incentives for the ones here in the workshop already, for the four, uh, for the research networks. So for you, what incentives are important and could actually find their way into the concepts of our platform? Um, once the incentives have been identified in the following workshops, uh, one idea is to present these incentives on the donor side to the Leap Agri work uh, project, to the FOSS network. Uh, those are donor networks in which we are involved as institutions who are also part of the Leap for FNSSA project. Then we have another incentive. We want to jointly launch research. Um, we have to analyze the options to share, pool, and invest resources to jointly generate concepts along a theory of change and impact pathway. So during the dialogues of action, we have to attract partners with the incentives from the TCIPs, from the concepts for outreach, which we will develop in the communication concept, for the concepts for data and knowledge management, to then uh, actually have an analysis, what are the resources we need? So we will probably have a listing of required resources to implement the PIMC, including real research, real uh, outreach to target groups, real knowledge management activities. And then we have to see what are the existing resources in our networks which we can provide in kind because we have uh, research institutes are already equipped with, with working groups, with projects, with funds. And uh, what are the existing uh, resources at the funds basis, which, uh, which can be contributed through funders and programs. And this will, um, open up the floor to, to really get into the action of the dialogues form. So this is uh, our contribution to, to what we think is important in the coming working groups. And I would like to open the floor for the discussion now. And uh, maybe we start with questions and then we can discuss. Thank you very much.
Shall I stop the screen or would you like to have a look at? It's fine, Henning. You can uh, moderate this session and if you like, you can uh, remain with your slides in case there are questions. Perhaps as a comment, because you might not have seen in the chat, uh, there were um, some questions and also a kind of un unclarity. And, and uh, allow me just to briefly comment here. Um, the, the, the principles that we are following here are the principles of co-production. What Henning um, uh, presented here was uh, for me personally very, very interesting. In particular, this table, I would like to ask you, Henning, uh, to, to show this table again um, with the incentives. Um, uh, this is a starting point for our discussion. And um, these documents that we are sharing here, these ideas that we are sharing here are meant to be discussed because a strong alliance only can build on an intrinsic motivation of each of its partners. So for that, uh, these assumptions that are displayed here again um, in this uh, table are, are very valuable. These are good starting points. We will have to check again, um, is that correct? Are these the incentives or are there others? And then slowly, slowly we will uh, grow this partnership, we will grow this network of actors towards a meaningful process as we, as we want it. So uh, in, in that sense, that was just a comment from my side, um, handing to one of the comments in the chat. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I forgot something very important. See how partner Seaham in Leap for FNSSA is presently setting up an inquiry which addresses exactly this issue. So this is also uh, the idea to to feed this discussion with our partners with Seaham. Uh, and uh, I have the, the screen shared now, so I cannot see the, the comments, but I saw that Isabel had a had a comment. So so please feel free to comment or to ask questions. Just on your table, the the sources of the of the of the sentences that are in your in your table, we we, we do not know where they are coming from. And then I just put in the chat well, which was the source of this um, of the assessment you are putting in each um, each in, in each box okay um, sorry I have to say this clearly this is not uh, elaborated with other stakeholders yet this is just to open the discussion how we see this could develop so basically, this is what we developed in our task between uh, NRF and, and BLE and which we presented to the work package partners. We want to open the discussion on this. This is why I said this, it, it, it may even be wrong, but we would like to take one, just to show this approach that we have to identify um, the, the incentives for each actor. No, no, it is not a, just a question. Since there are no, no indication on that point, just to know where they were coming from. But probably you should put it somewhere in the, okay. in the corner or I don't know where. Yes, I put that it comes out of my mind. <laughs> okay. okay, thanks. <laughs> Any questions? Any ideas? Do you think this uh, this approach would be good to uh, take into account the incentives in the working groups? I think I'll stop the screen because I cannot see comments or hands. I can help you with the chat, Henning. I will check the chat from time to time. Okay. Um, are the colleagues from from Seaham uh, willing to to comment what what their approach will be with the inquiry? Because it's a very similar approach. And then we have uh, afterwards David Akana lifted his hand. A 
Okay, maybe David. Well, thank you, Henning. Uh, I thought that was that was great uh, in terms of some of the assumptions along the incentives, uh, both on the demand and the supply side. But I have to admit that I really did not understand how to read that. Um, so um, I don't know if you want to just maybe take a shot at that, maybe under a minute, just for so that I can clearly understand. Um, so you showed two of those different slides, one uh, the demand and the other one the supply. Um, yeah, and I think the assumption in terms of what would be the expectation age pattern, um, if you're looking at research and innovation uh, institutions, um, that seems to be probably, uh, you seem to capture that correctly from, from what I, from uh, based on, on uh, the knowledge that we might have. But I just wasn't sure how to read this. Um, that's the point. Um. You, you were not sure how to, so I, I, I didn't understand it perfectly. You wouldn't show how to what? Uh, how to read uh, this, yeah. uh, this slide. So um, I don't know if you just want to maybe just speak yeah. to how to read it and understand it properly. Okay. Um, what we did is we just, uh, every time uh, we, we, we were looking at an actor, in the blue lane on top, for example, take one from the middle, the funder. Um, how do you read this? So what is the uh, expectation of the funders towards farmers? So then you look in the matrix to the red actor. What is the expectation of the blue actor towards the red one? So um, the expectation of the funder towards the farmers and entrepreneurs is that uh, there that the dialogue with entrepreneurs assures uh, to identify demand uh, for research and to assure that the knowledge can be transferred which is uh, derived from research so this is the way uh, we we read this this matrix does this make it clear a bit yes it does okay Thank you very much. Um, then, then I saw saw uh, our colleagues from 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 Seaham were were there now. Yeah, uh, Henning, we really appreciate the huge job you you made to fill in all the 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 matrix. I think that uh, as I told. Uh, in the, our last meeting that this could represent not only uh, an input uh, for uh, to to build the, the the survey the questionnaire but also to define uh, the bucket of services provided by the platform okay thank you very much then i see the hand of tabi joda yes sir uh, good day everyone it's Hello. my pleasure to, to be with you. I'm Tabi Jodha from One Billion Trees for Africa, Korav uh, Nayat. I represent the Korav Nayat uh, group, and I'm very uh, pleased to be invited here. Uh, looking at the matrix, uh, I wanted to suggest a few things from a critical perspective, by the way, in terms of um, looking at uh, how we connect the, the, the ideas, the innovations, and uh, from the grassroots, especially the grassroots uh, youths. If you look through this matrix, uh, I want to see how we can highlight where are their own uh, um, ideas coming in here. Because in terms of the consultations and building strong partnerships, we have to be very, very careful about the inclusion uh, approaches. And if the yes. inclusion approaches aren't realistic and don't, don't bear very straight uh, down into the communities where the critical uh, mass of rural youths, rural women. Hello. We, we could not hear you for a second. Could you uh, say that again, please? Yeah, I was saying if the inclusion strategies in terms of building this partnership should, should be realistic enough in looking at the full inclusion of the ideas, the aspirations of a critical mass of rural unemployed youths 
and rural unemployed women who are actually on the front line of these uh, challenges that have been mentioned. And then again, we try to look at, I think they should also highlight the aspects of the connection, the, the interface between the, 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 these policies, the ideas, the programs, and those on the field, on the front line, who are bearing most of the impact of these degradations and uh, the challenges. Most often, if policy is so, so much in the hands of intermediaries, we lose to, to get a real impact on the, on the targets. So we should have also very strong voice or strong inclusion of how there is direct contact of implementation with those on the field, not just the intermediaries. So we, we, we create a bad. Uh, we have a problem to understand you. Alangs. But, so but I think I, if so, that's my just uh, just to add more value to that uh, metrics that I, I would like these aspects to really be highlighted. Would you like to, or is, are there plans to make that more uh, more uh, as a priority in the in, in going forward? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for highlighting that because that is one of the issues we have as as funders because. Um, of course, especially when you're a funder in, in Europe, it's very difficult to, uh, to, to organize a proper dialogue with the target groups. And it is also a problem at funding level because this is often not well reflected in, in, in research programs uh, to properly organize this outreach to the target groups and to involve them. So um, this is, in my view, a very valuable contribution, which should be put on the ag agenda of uh, the, the working group on communication. And especially because I think this would be a very strong incentive for funders, but also researchers, if such a platform facilitates the outreach through organizations which are specialized on that. Uh, thank you very much. I'd like to um, add a, a little point in terms of recommendation, yes. please. Yes. Just to add in terms of recommendation, there is a strong need, there's a strong need to have well, uh, well uh, thought or well meaning you know, dialogues at the community level where you can actually listen the voices of those on the front line speak in terms of their needs, sharing their needs, because there is also a challenge of, uh, 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 the challenge of communication sometimes with the researchers. Researchers yes. come with uh, very highly scientific jargons and uh, scientific languages that often are not well translated into the rural languages that people can understand what a research question is, 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 is meaning. So well-meaning conversations or dialogues with these communities to assimilate the real or to aggregate the real meaning of the, uh, the contextual challenges can actually help. And I, I think this should, should play directly in getting uh, into the hands or should be communicated directly by those voices. If I may these, come in here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Excuse me for interrupting you, Tabi, and also Henning, I see there are other hands raised, uh, but just as a brief comment, uh, Tabi, I'm very happy that you are today here. Um, I met Tabi two days ago in a, a conference on the CCSE, Climate Change and Sustainable um, Energy Working Group, and I was quite impressed, Tabi, by your statements here, and you're repeating them here again. This is very valuable for this process, and as Henning said, kindly uh, join the working group, which will work on the communication concept, because we need exactly this information uh, that you are very critically uh, are stating here. So um, I have your email address, Tabi. We will stay in contact with that regard. And again, I would be very happy if you could join this working group uh, on the communication concept. Thank you. And sorry for interrupting here, Henning. Are there are other hands. I'm not sure whether you can see this, uh, David yes. and Krishan. Mm -hmm. Maybe just uh, to, f to give one answer to Tabi, um, we think uh, on the funder side often this is 
one of the big problems in communication of research outputs, especially to individually address people and not just representatives. And this is uh, why we have a slot in our, uh, our work package, um, which, which is actually just addressing the term rural labs, but we haven't elaborated it properly, but we think that this would be a component which is very important. Um, Krishan, please, your hand is raised. Yeah, great, thank you. I'll just lower it as well. Um, yeah, I just wanted to bring in this um, perspective that we, while the table looks like a, while well, the matrix looks like it's something that is demand and supply, we, we have to understand our context is that we're looking at promotion of knowledge exchange, information exchange, we're looking at promotion of collaboration. All of these are not transactional processes where there's a supplier and there's a, de uh, there's a demander and there's a supplier that you, you're not. Well, it's, uh, so there's, it's not transactional in the sense that there's an expectation that I'm supposed to be doing it for you and you expect to get this from me. Yeah. Uh, and it comes back to the discussion. So in terms of the, you know, while it's a two by two matrix, we may have to, include other dimensions for example um I, I still am not too i'm not too keen about the use of the word we had expectations as and, and demand i think the demand and expectations are pretty much similar so we have to be careful what is it that we are defining as what is someone able to provide that of someone else needs and that's where we are looking at the 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 concept we're looking for is the is the uh, mutual benefit or the benefit in one direction, but there might be the benefits from, from the other direction. The other complication we have in this case is that does the person or the, the, the stakeholder who we think has to supply that information feel that this is part of their mandate, or part of their job, because they may not know that you expect them to be able to give this information. But in our, in our context, we are looking at working as a group to, to identify who is the most appropriate, who is the best placed person who can facilitate the flow of information. And that's where we, we then define the expectation from the group is that you are the best place to do it. And therefore we, we would like you to take on that responsibility on behalf of the collective. And that's where we then we, we, we create the sense of recognition of what we are bringing to the group in terms of information provision but also what we are getting from others who bring similar information. So in fact, I was looking at it and I was thinking maybe we need to have a more than just one uh, matrix, but there might be a, what is the expectation or what is the demand? Who do we, who do we think is most appropriate to, to get that information across? And maybe who, who else do they relate with or how do they facilitate the process to, to get the information across? Because in the end, we're all looking at uh, creating that pathway of information and data. And, and that's why I fully agree that it, it, has a, it has an implication for the communications group, but that is the underlying factor that build, builds in on the, on the collaboration aspect. So yeah, just all that to say that the, the, the matrix might have to be revisited again, and maybe we might have to include maybe three stages to see whether it makes more sense to people when they're collecting the information, because in the end, it's all about defining the flow from, from yeah. the origin to the use of it. Uh, and there might be more than one stakeholder involved. And maybe that's what um, uh, our colleague just now was, was referring to, that the youth also can play a big role in the, in the momentum for driving the collaboration, but we need to know how do we incentivize them to make accessible information that they have they are able to tap into for the benefit of the of the larger group and and vice versa they can also just like they are at the source of the information they can also be at the beneficiary of the processed information or the processed data which then becomes knowledge or information and knowledge products yeah anyway it's um a little bit a little bit a little bit complicated because I've gone through these discussions before and uh, we just have to understand that it is not as simple yeah. as doing a survey and just finding a, you know, just linking these two things. 
Thank you. Well, thank you very much because um, I hope that we are revisiting this table because basically it just, yeah, it just put it there to open the discussion. Yeah. And and it kind of dropped on my out of my mind on the PowerPoint, and I, I hope that we are revisiting that one. Yeah. All right. so, and I actually understand that you you see that the discussions we will have about communication is already more or less this third dimension you're talking about, right? Yeah. So um, yes, it would be good to have it in there. Thank you very much. Right. Thanks. Uh, Abdu, your uh, hand is yes. raised. Thank you, thank you, Annie. Um, I uh, very much like the comments made by uh, uh, Christian. They are uh, spot on, and that's a bit what I was trying to drive to in uh, the comment I made in the chat. I mean, I, I like very much the incentives, but I'm not very sure that the underlying assumption that uh, the different groupings of actors are discrete enough and sufficiently differentiated from one another. When you take in practice, uh, the NGOs, they tend to cut across so many of uh, the incentives that have been described. And uh, sometimes research does a little more than what is uh, uh, just described. So I would be happy to see a situation where we do revisit uh, uh, the matrix, and I'm not sure that it's going to be just a matrix. It's probably going to some, to be a multi-dimensional uh, 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 picture when when uh, when we are done. So yes, uh, Christian did express what I was feeling. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. D David, your hand is still raised. Have you got another uh -huh. comment? No, I think that's it. Okay. Isabel wants to come in. Yes, I'm sorry because I don't find the the, the icon to to pick on to get it. Uh, and um, to to go further on what Christian was saying, then you have also to have another dimension, which is how to feel to feed the upper level of the general platform, and therefore, how do you? manage when this is finished to go at the upper side and to feed the, the general platform. Mm. I'm not sure whether I understand. Is, is it, it with the filling you mean um, filling an information platform or no, uh, if, if I may help here, perhaps, um, Isabel, this this uh, is again a discussion uh, that we might want to have again in Leap for Evan SSA. We are working here towards an AU-EU platform. Yes, the West African EU Alliance is a, is a kind of pilot, but we are not playing around. We are creating here a network. We find out which principle is uh, appropriate, which mechanism. And this mechanism that we are developing here will feed into the overall development of the platform. So your question here uh, to what was Henning was, was saying is, is, uh, is very simple answered. We will feed this, what we learn here into the overall AUEO platform. Thank you. Yes, but the question is how, because the, some of the specificities you will find there and some discussion will have there, you will have there, will not all be uh, convenient or adequate to, to, to go straight as, as it is in the general one. And probably there are some specificities that will be there and others that will be shared at the upper level. Therefore, it should even we are, you are on a, at the early stage of your platform, of your, your initiative, it's probably also interesting to already have the, the thinking of how to make it the most efficient in order to, to, to keep the specificities you have found and defined in this platform and which are the general um, comments or the general view you should share uh, with the upper level and also with the North African uh, platform that will be uh, um, 
that will be also uh, intent on the other end. Yes, That's and exactly. Point. Exactly, we will differentiate that, we will do this uh, like that. Uh, we had already a discussion here about that uh, even in the West African EU alliance, uh, there are many differences, uh, climatic differences, cultural differences uh, um, from the, the ecosystems. And yes, we have to consider the specificities, but we also find out uh, general approaches for the collaboration. And that is what we are doing here. Thank you. Henning, let me uh, remind you, uh, um, since the former session was a bit longer, I would say until five, five minutes after one, and, and then let's close this session. So you have uh, roughly um, seven minutes more. Thanks. Okay, thank you very much. Um, maybe just to, to, to raise this issue, which uh, Isabel had to inform also our other partners, uh, we are actually presently launching the same process in Northern Africa. And, uh, and this is very important, which means that uh, we are hoping that uh, ideas which are coming up, for example, in West Africa can be uh, presented to our partners in Northern Africa and vice versa, especially because the approach we're taking here is, of course, that we're hoping to open up uh, a platform over all Africa for the EU-AU partnership, but that we are going via subregions because, um, because the infrastructures are very good developed at subregional level, which does not mean that we are not then going to work with FARA at, at, uh, at, at the level which goes uh, further or the European Forum on Research. Um, well, what I just saw is that Mohamed Abdelai Ebe has come in. Is that right? I just want to yeah. greet him. <laughs> yes, I'm very sorry. I was uh, in another meeting <laughs> far away in Bamako. So <laughs> sorry, I'm very sorry. Thank you. We're very for... pleased that you're here. Thank, Thank you very you. much. I hope um, uh, Dayo have uh, kept all the notes and I will discuss with him. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments and questions? So then I would say... Well, you not reacted to my comment, any? I don't oh. know. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, the, the comment which you just gave with regards that we have to revisit uh, uh, this this um, matrix which I, I showed. Is it that one? Correct. Right. Yes, yes. Uh, sorry, because um, uh, this is exactly what, what uh, was my comment also towards Krishan. I fully appreciate if we revisit that and maybe we see in what working group we revisit that matrix, probably in the communication working group. So uh, I would be very happy to, to relaunch that as a topic and maybe also as an eye opener for the fact that we all have to come up with incentives to attract uh, the other partners. Thank you very much. Perhaps as an additional comment here, um, uh, since Abdu also wrote uh, in, in the chat about that, I agree with what you, you said, Henning. Um, we will have to address this uh, in the work on the communication concept. And uh, these groupings of actors, this is far away from being perfect. And we have to find a way uh, indeed to define theoretically, for example, as you wrote, where are the NGOs? They could be seen in different groupings. They have to be seen there. And we have to find a way how to display that, how to explain that, and then to put uh, some flesh on the bones, which means uh, that we start working with the institutions uh, in the region um, to, to make this very clear. So um, Henning, do you have a, a last word for this session? Then I would say we can move to the next one. 
My last word is thank you very much for your contributions. I'm very happy that we're getting into this process. Thank you very much. You're muted, Stefan. You're smiling and muted. <laughs> <laughs> At least that is a message. Thank you very much. I didn't took note of that. <laughs> so uh, I th I assume you can you can see my my screen, right? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, yes. wonderful. So thank you. So again, thanks, Henning, uh, for facilitating this session about uh, Dialogues uh, for Action, which is the second phase of the program and innovation management cycle model. Uh, let's come to the next session, uh, which is titled West African uh, EU Alliance Innovation Hubs, uh, because we have uh, in Leap for Heaven SSA uh, a task which is dedicated in particular to innovation hubs, but uh, this is closely linked to the uh, coming communication concept that we are developing. And I give the floor now to Katharina Kuss from Go Africa uh, in Germany. Please, Katharina, the floor is yours. You have um, half an hour, let's say at, at 1.35, please uh, stop this session. Um, you can moderate this session now and please share your screen. Thank you. Thank you, Stefan. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I will try to share uh, my screen, which will work hopefully now. Can you see my presentation? Yes. Um, okay. I'm not sure I can see you all. Uh, okay, here we are. Um, so yes, uh, I'm here to um, to talk about the communication concept, uh, which I do on behalf of Task uh, Two Point Three, um, Leap for Heaven no, Project. No, please. I think we are, for me in Waga, we are, I'm seeing the last slide. I mean, yeah. All right. Um, so yeah, maybe I should say something about my background. Fortunately, I do have uh, five years working experience on uh, network management. Um, I was a manager of a network um, which was managed by a Spanish institution but was funded by the European Commission to facilitate the communication between the European Commission as a funding uh, body and uh, the research communication uh, system in 28 European member states. Um, and we have had uh, very similar discussions and very ambitious ideas at the beginning of the project. We wanted to develop a database with um, researchers, NGOs, community stakeholders for 28 member states all over Europe to inform them about policy and calls, publications, whatever, um, on European level. But then um, after a year of the project, we realized that that was pretty over ambitious. And um, the reason, and we decided not to channel the communication centrally from Spain to all the member states, but we rather decided to give the mandate to the member states. Uh, and there is a network which is called uh, Network of National Contact Points. And then they had already their own instruments of, uh, uh, of communication dissemination and communication channels and concepts and so on. So, um, I'm um, very happy to be here and to be able to contribute to the development of, um, of this communication concept between Western Africa and EU. Um, and uh, I'm working together with uh, Dora from uh, Knowledge Economy Foundation in Egypt on this task, but also with other colleagues, um, especially with uh, Rose from Stepri in, in Ghana, and also I would like to mention Siham from World Package 4, who is um, very much uh, 
yeah, who is leading uh, the work package for one communication and deep for FNSSA. Um, well, due to COVID-19, um, I'm quite strongly impacted by, um, by the simple fact that schools are closed and I could not read all the documents and I, I had to be very pragmatic and that's why probably my presentation is kind of complementary to Henning's because um, I have only one question uh, which might be quite complicated and while Henning was providing the answers um, I'm rather asking the questions. So my question is who communicates to whom by using which tools and to achieve what? This is, uh, there's four kind of answers that we would need to provide. And it's not easy to give those answers in a big network that we are trying to develop, establish, and maybe there is already components that we just need to bring together and use already available communication tools. Um, so all the presentation is structured around these four, four questions. And I will give you some examples from Leap for FNSSA um, and the invitation to uh, involve West African innovation hubs is already expressed. Um, so the, the question, who communicates? Um, if we look on the title of the, of the workshop and the alliance that we're developing, uh, we might realize that we sometimes talk about Africa, sometimes talk Afri about African Union, sometimes talk about West Africa, sometimes uh, about ECOWAS country or other countries, and sometimes we talk about Europe and uh, about European Union. And uh, it's quite difficult to see who is having the mandate for what. And if we are a network of uh, stakeholders with different own agendas, commitments, mandates, um, we might not be able to speak on behalf of any of these um, uh, state uh, how do we call them, conglomerates, communities. Um, so we always can speak um, on behalf of our own institution, um, unless uh, we decide in the network to have a decision-taking mechanism um, for the network and uh, a structure for the network to speak on behalf of the network. And that's pretty complicated. Um, so in our case, for instance, in uh, LIPO FNSSA, we are currently having 35 European and African partners. Um, they are structured in a steering committee um, and we have work package leaders and co-leaders for work packages. And there's very high debates and very enthusiastic debates. And now we're thinking of uh, further developing this uh, network, this alliance to be maybe more specific, more focused on Western Africa. Um, but we have always to bear in mind that all of the stakeholders to have their own communication agendas and ways. And um, if we think of having a joint external communication by the network, we will have to think about uh, decision-taking procedures within the network. Um, we will have to answer questions like who is um, in charge of si signing press releases, who does approve uh, publications on, on the website, um, and all these type of things. Basically, who provides the content um, for the network, um, for instance, to inform policies or to influence policies. Um, yeah, then um, the idea is, um, as you can see currently, there's uh, 15 African, 20 European partners um, to enlarge the network or to have a more, stronger focus on West Africa. And we believe that one of the uh, structures that uh, could be quite relevant 
is um, the Sahel Alliance and the, the network uh, which signed the declaration, uh, the Wagadugu Declaration. Um, I think it's particularly interesting to involve countries like Chad, Niger, Mauritania, Mali, Burkina, which are not very, very well uh, participating in European funding instruments so far. And um, I believe that could uh, really be a major contribution um, to involve these countries and to give them more, more visibility and space. Um, so we have um, here the, the logos of countries uh, of organizations who um, are members of the Sahel Alliance. Then when we think about who are the target groups, um, we might say it's the different, the, the target groups more or less what, uh, what Henning already mentioned. Um, but if we think a little bit more concrete, for instance, on policymakers, um, I think I haven't mentioned funders because in my mind, usually funders and policymakers go hand in hand, but well, funders of course, <laughs> Uh, a part of the of the targeted groups, um, and my kind of uh, experience, I was usually working with the European Commission um, and the uh, uh, Horizon 2020, FP6, and Seven program uh, in in large international European networks. Um, so um, I know that there's many, many, many different um, parts, for instance, at the European level to, to be addressed. There's DG research, there's DG for development, there's DG for health, there's DG for agriculture, um, there's DG for education, I think, I'm not sure about that. And um, also we could think of uh, addressing the European Parliament, uh, if we want, for instance, to um, if we want, for instance, to have influence on the future EU Africa um, strategy, which is in the process of development, um, so policymakers are not policymakers, and there's of course policymakers on national uh, level in Europe and Africa. Um, so. I think it's quite important to, to give a thought to the question whether um, we want to establish this collaboration on, um, on the level of economic communities uh, and political communities or whether, it, whether it's rather big continental um, alliance of, of research institutions and stakeholders. Uh, who are we? I think it's, it's a very, very important question. Who is a member of the network? Who is a member of the Alliance? And what voice can we give to the Alliance? Um, for instance, in, um, if we think about regional research networks, um, in Europe, they are organized on a national level. Uh, we would have um, research networks, for instance, in, uh, in, in the field of health, and uh, there they will contribute to uh, to the ministries uh, the ideas and wishes and desires and policy advice on on the research agendas and uh, funding mechanisms or or proposals for funding. And then this goes to so-called program committee members, and then the program committee members meet on um, on the on the EU level to discuss uh, preferences and priorities for the next uh, research cycle, um, and this is being included into the research agenda of the European Commission. So I would be very very happy to know how that works. Uh, in, in the West African region, for instance, or at the EU level. Um, 
And definitely we want to uh, involve um, other networks uh, from projects funded by the African Union Commission, U European Union Commission, um, under the ZERA program Horizon 2020 and Africa Union Research Grants. Then we said we want to invest uh, to involve uh, investors, entrepreneurs, startups, farmers organizations, general public. And if we think of having this stake, these stakeholders from Europe and Africa, uh, and there's not only one person from each uh, network or from each organization, it becomes very, very, very huge uh, network of stakeholders. And of course, not everybody can be um, in, involved to the same stage. So we have probably to distinguish between two uh, types of, of, of members and stakeholders. Um, but what, what we would probably need, uh, or what I think is very, very useful as a tool to manage that network, um, to have uh, partners and stakeholders, to have a database uh, with contact details and perhaps information on the, on, on the individual, to know, for instance, if I would like to speak to somebody who is an expert on, on communication, in a particular organization, perhaps I could address that contact, that person directly. Um, and yeah, this type of, um, of, of tools are, are very important, but currently um, there's um, a new law in, in Europe, uh, the EU data protection law, uh, which makes it quite difficult to, uh, to have uh, one single management tool for all stakeholders. And um, I think it, we need to find a solution for that on a very early stage, because otherwise we're spending our time in putting um, email addresses, names, institutions into the Excel sheet and um, cannot use that adequately with keywords and uh, by using filters. Um, then um, on communication tools. Um, I have listed some communication tools that we are currently using in uh, LeapProf and SSA, and you can see them here. So of course we have uh, internal meetings for communication. Um, these meetings are consortium meetings, um, steering committee meetings, work package meetings. We have reports, minutes, and um, calls and the platform and many other things. Um, and this all helps us to, um, to manage our external and internal communication. Um, and I think this probably, this component of communication would need to be um, kind of covered by um, an internal communication concept. Um, we can see now in only for FNSSA that it's not always clear um, or it's not always easy also to formulate uh, goals, objectives for, for such a big and diverse group of stakeholders. Um, that's why um, the communication concept, including a mechanism for decision taking and improvement of internal and external communication for the network might be very useful. Uh, in terms of um, external communication, we have a number of activities, um, which are, for instance, conferences, webinars, workshops, summits, stakeholder forum. We have a number of publications, reports, newsletters, deliverables, policy briefs. I'm not very sure, but at least in, in some projects, uh, they do exist. Um, and um, draft road proposals. So these are possible, possible ways of express the needs of uh, specific stakeholders. Of course, also we have the entire scope of, uh, of internet website, working spaces, email, social media, and Wikipedia and other platforms to which could serve for, for the communication in a network uh, that we developing in our minds. Um, there are 
very new developments and opportunities coming up um, caused by COVID-19. Um, there's currently, as we all see, <laughs> the a digitalization boom and new communication tools, and they allow higher participation, which is great on one hand. On the other hand, if we have uh, very huge meetings, it's uh, more difficult to um, be very precise about the output and, and satisfy the needs of all stakeholders and participants and, and contributions. Um, so what I would suggest, um, of course, we do have this suggestion already on the table to have a working group for communication. But I think however the web network develops, uh, it would be good to maintain or have a group for strategic communication in the network. So the group is able to, um, has the resources, time um, to, to think about strategic communication, what is actually the output of a specific activity and how can this be translated into um, a long-term communication uh, concept or processes. Um, I'll give you an example of, uh, of a workshop that we organized uh, in West Africa in October. And I think many of you have participated in that workshop. Um, of course, there was the high level policy dialogue in, in which uh, some of us uh, actively participated, spoke. And then there was the second part um, with uh, business ideas, uh, by 25 idea careers from West African countries. Um, and we have had a very nice presentations, very interesting presentations, and very, um, very, very clear, uh, clearly expressed demands from those young startups. Um, and we have done a lot on communication, and I'm very grateful to the team in, in CHEM that they were facilitating this activity um, very strongly on our website. And um, here you can see um, the short-term communication for only this one activity. Um, there, there was a project deliverable, there was an article, there was a save survey, there was a, a catalog of, of those uh, 24 selected idea careers. Um, and so on, um, a newsletter special issue. So we have had uh, quite a lot of communication around this activity. But now the question is how can the outcomes of such an activity, what has been shared with the network be used to, um, to have an impact on, uh, on policy or to have an impact on, um, on development uh, in, yeah, in the region. Um, and to here we are, have been talking, um, here you can see- You have 10 more uh, minutes, uh, Katarina, okay, please. Coming. And you must stop the session. Perhaps you might uh, foresee a bit time for discussion also. Sorry for interrupting you. Coming, coming to an end. Um, so what they were calling for is, for instance, enabling environment, good policies, private pa public partnerships, reliable platforms. But one very concrete uh, demand was also, and hello to Rose, I, I have taken the message, quality assurance systems. How, so the message is taken, but how can we now uh, proceed uh, with our long-term strategy, communication strategy, to promote this idea of quality assurance system for farmers and all value chain actors to improve um, food and nutrition uh, the NSSA systems. So here we are. Um, and in order to be able to have a very strategic communication, we have to jointly agree on the joint objectives of mutual benefit. And in such a big network and diverse network, it might be difficult to have these joint objectives, but only if we have um, clearly defined them, then it will be much easier to have a very strategic external communication. I'll give you a, an example. Um, I have taken 
the uh, research agenda points presented at the meeting in October. And um, there were seven uh, research agenda points taken um, or presented. And if I, if I would ask you now to, um, to choose between uh, one of the seven points, you can do so in the chat if you wish, um, to express your wish on what you think would be a priority for the network, um, then it might be very difficult. We would start a very, very long discussion on, on our objectives. Um, and that's why um, this serves you only as an example um, and as a call actually to include mechanism uh, for decision-taking within the network to support structures for science-based outreach and inform policies. So that's what I was speaking at the beginning uh, or mentioning at the beginning, who is formulating on behalf of the network, what is the demand uh, or what is the, what is the opinion, what is the outcome uh, output of our activities within the network? Um, well, questions and questions. Um, and we need to proceed. Um, and the way we want to proceed is uh, we want to involve and, and invite research institutions, innovation hubs from ECOWAS countries uh, to join this communication, concept development. We also invite startups, all those who have participated in the October uh, meeting and farmers organizations, investors and fund, funders. And we want to discuss, compare, align, merge existing communication objectives and concepts. We want to co-develop international, uh, internal and external communication concepts for West Africa EU Alliance on food, nutrition, security and sustainable agriculture, including dissemination plans. And we want to co-develop the West Africa EU Alliance external communication to build on evidence-based research outputs to strengthen policies across Africa and Europe. And here you can see the, the way the very concrete planning for the working group, um, which uh, yeah, has been proposed by the overall uh, coordination of, of work package two within LIFOF and SSA. It's pretty ambitious, but um, I'm happy that there is already um, Cora volunteering to take the lead of, uh, of this group. Um, and I'm uh, very confident that uh, with the experience of having uh, 23 countries in your network um, and probably a very good communication structure already developed, we can make it. Um, so that's it from my side. Thank you very much. And I'm looking forward to your questions, contributions. And also I would like to give the space um, to my colleague Dora Kiani from um, Egypt, as uh, she might uh, will to moderate the discussion. Thank you. Could you uh, stop sharing your screen or you want to continue, Katarina? You have five minutes no. more. Okay, I'm fine. fine. I'm uh, willing to take any questions if somebody has any questions. So then please stop sharing the screen. It's black currently. Then I can uh, come up with a agenda for the next session while you're receiving questions. Is it gone now? Yes, thanks. It's good. Um, Katharina? Yes. Okay. Well, hello, everybody. Um, I have to say that um, I had previously agreed with Katharina, who has been doing a fantastic job on the West Africa uh, program up till now that 
she should be managing this session, which she's doing very, very well. Uh, I just like to add uh, for everybody <coughs> that within the North Africa region, uh, the challenges are uh, in the same time similar, but as well different in the sense that we do have uh, a very vibrant, uh, I mean, very vibrant communities, plural, of uh, practitioners, uh, whether uh, NGOs, uh, startups, uh, therefore innovators and young entrepreneurs, uh, private sector, academia, uh, and of course, uh, researchers. Uh, however, when compared to West Africa, the existing structures of regional cooperation within the uh, region with entities such as CORAF uh, and, and WESCAL and so on uh, are not uh, up, well, are not available in our part of the world. Accordingly, what we are studying within the WP2 group is the way we can tackle the challenges of communication, but as well the challenges of defining uh, what's in it for those practitioners to get them to join in the group. And that is a question, uh, Katarina pointed it, and that's a recurrent question. Henning approached it in a different angle. There is no doubt that for this platform to succeed, uh, it has to be able to attract the uh, end beneficiaries, which we call sometimes practitioners, sometimes end beneficiaries. And if we succeed in this, then it means that we would have really done something uh, effective. Uh, it can also mean that in terms of target groups and to be able to reach, as one of the participants mentioned, really what they call the BOP, the bottom of the pyramids, rural women, youth, uh, and uh, definitely we can, this could require expanding the scope of our communication outreach to entities uh, which are not specifically labeled agriculture. For example, in Egypt, we have the National Council for Women. I'm proud to be on the Agriculture Committee. And they are uh, having quite a mapping at the regional governorate level. I'm sure that there are similar structures in other countries of Africa, which would enable us to really reach to those entities. And of course, that has to make sense and allow researchers to come on board and formulate all those needs into doable uh, structures, into doable theory of change and impact pathways. So that's my contribution. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you very much, Tara, for your statement also here. And uh, thank you for Katarina, for, uh, for both of you to facilitate this session from your perspective of addressing innovation apps, but even more as Dora um, uh, stated here in her last statement, um, we are looking very much forward for uh, the development of this communication uh, concept um, uh, very much likely under the lead of CORAF, as we said today. And um, it shows that we indeed have to conceptualize this communication concept uh, before to be very clear who are the stakeholders, how to address them, what does it mean to address farmers beyond our understanding here in our spheres to have a conference or uh, a Zoom meeting. So all that will be put into this communication concept. Again, thank you very much for um, facilitating this session here, uh, Dora and Katarina. Um, I would like to hand over now to Ioannis. Uh, Petronella unfortunately has to leave the meeting earlier, uh, but thanks for uh, her participation, even though that she cannot hear us. 
Um, I give the floor now to you, Johannes, please. Uh, you have time for until um, five minutes after after two o'clock. The floor is you. I, uh, yours. I, I stop sharing now uh, the screen and you can uh, start addressing uh, the issue of database and uh, of knowledge management, uh, not only in the West Africa EU Alliance, but also um, with regards to the AU EU platform and you work in the Leap for Heaven SSA project. Thank you, Janis, please. Thank you very much, Stefan. And thank you for the introduction. I will try to share the screen. And while doing that, I have to say that I'm very happy to be here with you today because I'm thinking of using this group as well for my own purposes, let's say, to make this uh, data knowledge management system better as well. So instead of formulating questions, I would also like some answers from you. And that would be in the second part of the, of the presentation, let's say. Uh, so in the beginning, I was thinking of uh, presenting a bit uh, the work that we've been doing in, uh, within the Leap for FNSSA concerning a management a knowledge management system and there are two different aspects uh, that we work with for that but then uh, of course formulating questions but also actually requiring some um, reflections from you in order to see what will be needed let's say in the future and uh, of course uh, it's going to be different uh, based on different um, let's say needs from the different uh, stakeholders that are involved in the future platform. So it's not an easy task, let's say, but I think we have to think in those terms now what, what the needs are and how to make this platform attractive, as many of you mentioned. Otherwise it will be just another gathering with uh, maybe not so much to to gain, let's say, no added value at all. But first, let me uh, start with, uh, let's say, presenting the work that we are doing. And uh, let's see how we can all take advantage from that. I do the presentation on behalf of uh, SLU, but of course also the ARC, the Agricultural Research Center from uh, South Africa. My colleagues, Petronella, uh, Shaminuka, and uh, Shadrach Mefuli were not able to join today, but they have been contributing to this presentation, of course. And uh, while in general, we should not forget that uh, Leap for FNSA is uh, not, uh, let's say, producing so much new knowledge. It's a, it's a coordination and support action, which means that we bring, let's say, existing knowledge to get, uh, together and then try to make something out of the existing knowledge, let's say. Um, and WP3 provides the core information system for the platform, the future platform that we are maybe uh, now all of us try to grasp how it's gonna look like. Uh, I don't think anybody knows now, but we are having at least some, some let's say stable points that we should consider for the platform. And uh, the FNSC project database is uh, part of the task to map and cluster ongoing and recently finished projects contributing to the FNSA roadmap. And um, um, I guess that this group is quite familiar with what the FNSA roadmap is and what we are working towards, let's say, or what we're working within. But I would like to have your opinion on that as well later on, let's say, on the questions that I will be addressing to you. Um, some objectives of the KMS work, the knowledge management system work, that's what KMS is uh, standing for. Uh, so why do we do this? And uh, why a knowledge management system uh, might be important for the future platform? Uh, well, we do this in order to map and probably we do it mostly for clustering, let's say the different finished and ongoing projects, the knowledge that comes out of it in order to strengthen the coherence and coordination within and across clusters, but also optimize in order to optimize research and innovation programs relevant to FNSSA. And uh, I'm happy to say that uh, the discussion today has been uh, basically a more general one, maybe some kind, uh, sometimes uh, forgetting or uh, not taking so much into account that we work with a specific theme, but 
as Stefan said, there have been other themes that are coming up uh, and uh, like uh, the energy and climate uh, initiatives. And uh, it might be so that we need to think in the same terms, even in, in the other areas, uh, let's say of uh, research and innovation. So maybe we should keep uh, like a more general um, thinking on uh, how to structure the work. Uh, another objective of the KMS uh, is uh, work is to design and implement tools and concepts uh, in knowledge management to improve the quality of information and the communication between scientists, policymakers, and practitioners, including farmers and investors. And this is a very challenging, uh, let's say, objective because uh, there's so many different kind of stakeholders that uh, we need to take into account. And uh, sometimes uh, that also affects the way that we structure the work. It has been mentioned before that, um, yeah, uh, we need to know, let's say, who we are addressing our work to. It is very important. And finally, you know, another objective is to develop new instruments for data analysis. Uh, so in most cases, it is very important to know what kind of information we need let's say, or the stakeholders need. And this will require probably different uh, and new systems for uh, analyzing the existing knowledge. But first, of course, we need to find the existing knowledge. So um, on that, it is a huge task to find the right information. There's a lot of information out there. But in order to find the right information, it probably takes uh, much more time. And then if you find something that you feel it is the right information, maybe it's not all information on a specific subject. So what we're trying to do is uh, to put together, let's say, all the pieces of the information out there. There are a lot of uh, EU and AEU projects uh, that are completed or ongoing in the domain of the FMSSA. And um, we are trying to find, analyze, aggregate, and report where we find, let's say, on a specific topic. Um, and as you all know, and maybe this is the reason why you suggest, let's say, a data managers group. I think it's a rather unusual group in this term because I don't think there are that many people out there working with uh, data management. Let's say there might be three, four, five, but I'm happy to see that you think about that because it might be a very decisive group uh, when uh, we think about the future of the platform and the attractiveness of the platform. So I think uh, it is very important that people working with these things uh, out there are sitting together and discussing what's out there and uh, how to develop it. So there's a lot of information on uh, AU, EU projects, uh, but it's not centralized and it is dispersed in different uh, texts in thousands of places. We do have the project database that I will uh, present later, but of course there's so much more information out there when it comes to project literature. There's also a lot of information when it comes, uh, who can, which comes from websites and uh, it is rather difficult again to choose and realize what is the relevant information. Well, one effort that we've been uh, doing within the FNSA project database in order to gather information on a project, on funded activities, is to have something that we call the FNSA project database. And now for some of you, it might be a repetition, but I think it's a useful repetition in order to also, you spread the information of uh, the existence of this project database, which I think is very important. It is an open database for every user to use. It is under the Leap for FNSSA um, uh, webpage. So you can see a specific place uh, having at the moment about, I think at the moment, the projects that we have, the FNSA related projects are about 224, five, I'm not so sure. It is uh, updated all the time, but we have a list of about of more than 200 projects related to FNSSA funded from uh, EU and AEU, but also bilateral programs. So uh, European countries that they that finance, let's say, um, projects on FNSSA. And we still develop that. So there will be more projects coming in here. 
We have, of course, uh, several uh, criteria in order to include one project. I mean, uh, the, the amount of uh, funding that the project has received has to be above a certain limit. Uh, there has to be African partners. This is very important. So we do not have projects that, that uh, include European partners uh, and no African partners. It has to be from both partners from both sides. And the other criteria that I'm not going to go very much into detail today, but uh, are quite crucial to think uh, also for the future of uh, an information and knowledge management system. Uh, there's a lot of information about the database that we have uh, specified in order to realize what's in there. Um, uh, a list, uh, yeah, and that's, that's a visual of the database, let's say. This is uh, just an example to show you what's, what's in here. Um, we have a map that uh, shows, let's say, in uh, certain countries or in the different African countries, uh, the FNSA related projects that have been funded, again, the ones that uh, fulfill the criteria. Um, we have uh, clustered, if I may use the word, let's say that has been used and uh, overused quite a lot during the last years. Uh, but we've put together, let's say, the projects, or we have uh, categorized the projects under the different roadmap themes, because that was, uh, let's say, um, a prerequisite that we had in our grant agreement to put, uh, to thematize, let's say, the different projects. So you can see that these are thematized according to the roadmap, the FNSA roadmap. But we have, of course, clustered the projects in uh, other categories as well on the uh, left, if you of course go into the homepage or the web page, it's much easier to realize that, but uh, there are different, um, let's say, categorizations according to the funder, to the country, to the type of project, uh, to the sub-theme of the roadmap, which is uh, also very interesting, and so on and so on. I'm not going to say so much about that. What is uh, very important in the use of uh, this database, as I see it at least, is uh, the, um, the search, the search, uh, let's say, window that we have. So just to make an experiment, I use the, 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 the project, the term agri-food systems to realize what kind of projects are in the database so far that are um, related uh, to agri-food systems, if I use that word. And uh, uh, you get for, at the moment 19 projects that are mostly to the electrical system. So, I mean, there are different ways to, let's say, uh, use the search engine and it's getting better and better. Uh, what kind of information for one project is there? That's uh, also something that I would like to show you. Uh, I took one of the projects, uh, Nextwood, went into uh, the next foot uh, window and uh, you can see that there's quite a lot of information when it comes to um, the description of the project with the objectives and uh, in some cases also the plan the working plan of the project on the right on the on the left part there is uh, information uh, that is uh, concerning the status of the project the start and end date the roadmap theme type of project and so on and so on so quite a lot of information that will let's say introduce you to to the work of uh, of, of a certain project what is not here and what is something that uh, is usually asked for by users is uh, uh, details concerning um, individual individual details, uh, contacts, and so on and so on. We do not have this uh, here because of the GDPR that was mentioned before. So here you cannot find any information connected to an individual. Uh, what you get is a project name and uh, you have to, let's say, do the search by yourself later if someone wants to contact. Uh, persons involved in the project. Uh, we have to be very careful on that. And uh, uh, we have had these discussions within this group several times within uh, colleagues from the WP2. And uh, it is a challenge, let's say, to, to actually get that kind of information. You will not get this from the project database. 
Uh, besides having the database, we of course feel that that fulfill. I mean, the database fulfills uh, certain needs for um, finding uh, relevant projects, uh, initiatives, and so on and so on. Uh, but it has its uh, limitations. Uh, lots of people are uh, satisfied with uh, this kind of information that comes from the database, but some of us maybe wish some uh, more information uh, when it comes to, let's say, more quantitative uh, information about several things. So another aspect uh, of the work in WP3 is uh, the um, text mining, the tools that we have using uh, text mining and artificial intelligent technologies that we call the KEOPS, which is, uh, stands for uh, uh, knowledge extraction and uh, precision system. So it is a tool that uh, you, by, by using uh, all the available sources, project websites, corporate of documents, uh, the FNC project database, it can extract uh, and uh, provide to, to the user uh, some outputs uh, that uh, might be used further on, let's say, as decision making. This tool now is not, uh, let's say, out yet, it's not uh, finalized, we're working on that, but uh, there has been uh, quite a lot of work on that. Uh, basically, the KOPS is uh, the second component of the knowledge management system to give a bit more detailed information on a specific issue. I'm not going to go very much into detail on uh, how the KOPS will be used, but it will be available for all of you, let's say, to check and test later on. There are several different, uh, let's say, um, information that comes out from the KEOPS searches. And uh, so far we've been testing within a smaller group, but we will uh, do much more extensive uh, testing uh, within the lib for fnssa consortium in order to uh, finalize and uh, make it improve it as much as possible within the frame of the project that is uh, for two more years. And of course, life after Leap for FNSSA is very interesting, let's say, to realize what we can do with these tools that we will produce at a certain level, let's say, within Leap for FNSSA. Uh, different links, links to Google Maps and links to GeoNames page and so on and so on. So there will be different kinds of products from the KELPS. Uh, I'm not so sure how this good comes came up, but you can see maybe this good that I said, I don't know, it was not me writing this good. But anyhow, um, so what is the contribution uh, of this uh, knowledge management system towards a sustainable FNSA platform? Because uh, this is maybe um, the reason why we work with this. Um, well, we believe that um, uh, it, this, this tools or these tools or the KMS uh, is a multidimensional analysis of the FNSA partnership uh, that will guide future decision making. This is why we do this. It will, of course, inform decision making in terms of uh, defining thematic priorities for focus uh, of the future platform. Um, that could be, let's say, one of the advantages for having something any kind of knowledge management system. Uh, it will provide information on the most uh, active organizations, existing alliances and potential new partners to market the platform. So we can use this tool also to identify who should or who might or who join the, let's say, the platform, the FNSA platform. And uh, it can be used to provide in order to provide basis for strengthening of alliances amongst projects partners that doing that are doing similar work. And this has been mentioned many times that uh, um, there is, of course, the ambition here with this day that we have today is to have a, let's say regional alliance, but there might be things happening in other regions with the same theme. And it might be important, let's say, to link all these efforts. Some very, very general, but really important things to consider is uh, how we see this um, 
sustainable blessings uh, platform. Uh, and of course, the knowledge management system that will be used. We believe that it has to be open to everyone. And this is very important. The tools that we have now are open to everyone. Uh, it has to be user friendly. If it is too advanced, maybe we exclude quite a lot of uh, different uh, stakeholder uh, um, groups that we should have. So it has to be user friendly. And what we need to also uh, take into account that uh, it has to be updated easily, otherwise it will die off. Uh, I will stop here. I will not formulate any questions uh, in this presentation as the other speakers did, but I have formulated some questions in something that is called the Mentimeter. So Stefan, do you think we have some time for this? You're muted. But yes, please go ahead. Okay, thank you. But what uh, you should do now is uh, you should uh, use any kind of device that you have close to you. You go to www.menticom and you use the code 8490558. And I will repeat that in just a second before I share this one here now. So maybe you are already in there. No, say the code again, please, uh, yes. Johannes. 8490 and then, oh, it's there. 890558. Okay. And there are not that many questions, so don't be afraid. But I think I think I need you, you know, like energetic now because it has been three hours of a meeting. So it's uh, quite a lot of information. And uh, first of all, uh, well, identify yourselves. Uh, you can use further uh, affiliations. Maybe you feel a farmer as well, or maybe you feel a scientist and a funder. So don't be afraid. Think what you are. I think it makes sense to know what this group is about. Uh, I will wait a bit more, of course, because you are many more than. Perhaps while uh, the colleagues are. Uh giving their answers here, just as a hint, uh, Johannes, in the chat, uh, Christian wrote something. If GDPR is so restrictive, can we at least provide a link to further information, and further information, without us indexing the names of people if these are published online somewhere else? You might want to answer to that. Yeah, thank you, Christian. Uh, this is already done. We have, uh, we have the web pages of the projects, let's say, or some reports there, so. Uh, this is done. And that's a way to avoid GDPR, let's say. Yeah. If, if I can just ask the question. So basically, you you mentioned that we, we do not provide the names of people, but coming through the system and the database, people who are interested to explore further will be able to do it because we give a link to where there's more information. Yeah, that's that's the thing. Uh, we've been discussing with the legal office many times. We do not We do not give a name would not give a description of the name that can identify the name, the individual, let's say. Yeah. So we have to be really, really careful on that. And uh, But by providing a link of the project, uh, we, we are on the safe side until yeah. then, let's say. But we do not provide, let's say, a link of a report that has a name because this is not allowed. So it is, <laughs> it is uh, in some cases, it is really tricky. And yeah. whenever we see that there is a problem, then we we simply delete a link. I'm doing the quality assurance of that because it is it is tricky. Um, okay, so far thirteen people have uh, replied, and we have uh, a balance between decision maker funders and uh, scientists. But we have something more. Um, just to want to mention that in the beginning, the, the first questions are maybe a bit informative for, for me and also for the work that we do in the work package. So maybe not and directly related, let's say, to the to the session today. But I will go to direct to direct questions for the session today later on. But the next question is: If you are aware of the existence of the FNSSA roadmap, maybe not entirely 
connected, but uh, I'm interested to hear <laughs> that. You only have one choice. And uh, while I'm waiting, I think we have a group that, of course, is uh, much more informed than other groups when it comes to the FNSSA roadmap, but it is not entirely so that everybody knows about the FNSSA roadmap, which is basically the, the starting point of uh, LEAP for FNSSA, if I may add. I will wait a bit more because in the previous question we had 13 answers. It has been adopted in 2016, so it was also the basis for Leap Agri. It's a very yeah. important document, yeah. Of course, of course. And I will proceed because this is not the important questions. Um, are you aware that the, there are themes in the FNSA roadmap? You can answer very shortly. Perhaps it's also important uh, to say, if you allow, Johannes, uh, it is a roadmap of the high-level policy dialogue between the AU and the EU. So this was a quite longer process, uh, and there have been 10 experts being involved uh, in the production uh, of this roadmap, uh, five from Africa, five from Europe. Thank you, Stefan. I will wait a bit more. And of course, uh, as Stefan said, this was uh, put together in 2016, and now we have 2021, and after the finish of uh, Leap for FSA it will be 2022 or three, if I remember correctly. So things have changed or are changing now. So the question is if we, or in, at what extent we follow the themes as, let's say, categorization uh, points or not. It's also something that we need to consider, I think, in general. Uh, that will affect the future work, let's say, or even for communication, but also for information and knowledge management and so on and so on. So people are, of course, this follows a stable pattern, as you can see. Um, um, I have to read the comment now from Christian, or maybe you can read it, Stefan. Uh, I hope the next question is not about what is in the roadmap. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. Actually, I took it out <laughs> because then it would be problem, problematic. But now I have some more information about the work that we've been doing so far. Uh, does anybody know about uh, the project database, for instance? Of course, there are a lot of leap for FNSSA participants here, but... Uh, Usually the outcome of this uh, question is that we have a lot of work to do in order to spread the, to spread our work in general. I mean, and I think this is also applicable for you, Stefan, because we do a lot of things, but maybe we do not reach a, a lot of people out there. Mm. So, yeah, and I mean, it's remarkable that in this tool here, which I like very much, I, I was first confronted with it two days ago, uh, and here again, I like it. On the other hand, we must see we have 27 participants, and not even half of them are answering due to several reasons. Perhaps the access to the internet is an issue. So the meaning of, of, of this short feedback here um, has to be taken carefully um, yeah of course of course yeah. always always but uh, i yeah. i will use this more like uh, yeah like that for starting a discussion and nothing so much not so yeah. much yeah anything else. so if you would like to let me know how many questions else do you have it's five uh, minutes two, or three. two or three okay let's do that i will then shorten uh the summary at the end uh and i give you five minutes more please okay thank you very much so do you recognize the need for such a database and of course then it will come the why so then you have to <laughs> justify it as well um, but most of people realize that the information has to be somewhere gathered, let's say. 
And now I want you to give some written uh, inputs. What kind of needs do you feel it should be fulfilled with the future KMS? And now I'm talking about the future, the future KMS, maybe life after Leap for FNSSA. We're talking about the FNSSA platform. So uh, write say in text, you have several options. You can, uh, you can think a bit. I give you 20 seconds to think, and then you should write what needs should be fulfilled by future KMS for the FNSSA platform. Take your time and do some thinking. and it will come as text messages. So community voices should be included there. Matchmaking opportunities and networking. Data accessibility. better organization of the information out there. A tool to search for individuals with specific knowledge, that's gonna be a very challenging one due to GDPR. A dashboard of past and ongoing projects and georeferenced collaboration linkages, this we can provide. Immediate access for better decision making on the spot. That's the hope that it, it is immediate because it's also very critical to have uh, easy to get information. Uh, I cannot imagine many decision makers slash funders that do two steps of a work. They want one step. They want a list of of of, of their desire. Let's say. Uh, so they will not analyze the data, ensure tools for research. Let's see if I can spread it down. Ensure tools for research and communication with community should be simplified and community centric. Great. Okay, I think. Um, I will give you 10 more seconds. And the last question is, um, how can we make this attractive? I think it was Dora mentioning that, and of course everybody agrees that if we do not have something attractive as a platform, then uh, we will basically not be, let's say, good enough. So how to think a future KMS or the FNSA platform to become more attractive? What will be needed there besides all these things that I have described that we can have? But do you think there's something more? Again, take your time. Think about 30 seconds and then start writing. But I think the word attractive for added value, if if I may say so, is um, a key for the platform, the future platform. And of course, for the KMS and any kind of product that we produce, why people will join, let's say, um, the platform. True, we need more money to do this, or we need dedication from different institutions that will be a part of the platform that will, that will. Uh, I wrote that just for you, Johannes. <laughs> well, it might be also in kind. I mean, if people join somewhere, then they have to contribute with something, isn't it so? Of course, I, I basically meant that this is very important that it's not, easy to maintain such a platform without forces. Yeah, true, true. If it's linked to a broader understanding and practice of communication inside of the digital sphere, I agree it has to be 
very practical and uh, with information easy to be used. We need passion, realistic approaches and content that is very present of people aspiration. So it has to be, it has to come from down, let's say. Infographics important, but this we can provide. And it must take advantage of existing networks of key managers to strengthen collaboration and build synergy. I totally agree. And this is the reason why I'm here today, let's say not only that of course, but we really need to find ways to, to collaborate. Let's say there's a lot of information out there. Some blog stories to attract interest, good idea. So, Yanis, I hope this was your last question. Because yeah, it I, is the last question. And uh, Stefan, I will give the floor to you now uh, to direct the discussion if you want. But I would like to stick to the comment that it must take advantage of existing networks and uh, of, of knowledge management. And I think it is very important. I mean, we have done some work. It looks like this. You will get a better idea in some three, four months on uh, what the Keops can do and so on and so on. But then after that, I think we need, again, even within the framework of uh, what you suggest here, Stefan, uh, for West Africa to sit and discuss on how to yeah, develop this, let's say, based on the work of all of us. So thank you very much. Thank you so much for this very interesting uh, presentation, Johannes, and also this uh, last exercise here. Uh, very interesting and very modern. Um, Yes, uh, indeed, uh, we will have to, and let me just uh, quickly share my screen so that we, I can also close this meeting. We do not have time for discussion, but again, it was a very interesting presentation from you, uh, Johannes, and in a way uh, you included the participants here with this last exercise. Um, we will have to find uh, a way to bring these, all these good ideas that have been presented uh, today um, together into a form uh, which uh, provides a viable way for the collaboration. So the last point, uh, the issue of the data knowledge managers, um, we do see this coming from the program and innovation and management cycle model um, in, in a broader frame, uh, uh, we, we call this a knowledge management and communication frame. So the database uh, that uh, Johannes presented and Keops are all instruments of this knowledge management and communication framework um, that we try to develop together. So, uh, and this would include many other uh, communication channels and methods and technologies um, so that all stakeholders could be addressed in an appropriate way uh, and not in one format, in many formats. And so that we uh, can, can reach a point where we have a kind of circular communication so that we are in constant loops, for example, between farmers and scientists, between uh, scientists and decision makers, or, um, different stakeholders who have to uh, address the same issue. Um, so um, we have to work on that in the frame of the communication concept that we work on uh, in the working group number two, and which is likely now uh, being uh, chaired by uh, CORAF. We will um, discuss the details about this in the coming three workshops. After this meeting here, uh, um, we will share uh, a fully request uh, for identifying the date and time for these workshops. And um, then we will discuss how to include the suggestions that are coming here, not only from leap for fnssa but also from the organizations so far involved. We will have to conceptualize, as uh, uh, it has already been stated, uh, the communication concept. So what does that mean? What do we have to include there? How do we include the KMS, the knowledge management system that is suggested from uh, leap for fnssa How do we include KOPS? How do we include the approaches so far um, that uh, we implemented with uh, the innovation hubs? Uh, how do we include um, this uh, matrix uh, that uh, Henning thankfully presented uh, today about the incentives uh, for joining such a platform? 
Um, we will include uh, AFRIS, which is a very promising instrument, which will make our life uh, very easy if we are becoming familiar with it. And uh, as promised by AFRIS, there will be an introduction in the coming workshops, or we will have a, a common workshop, then it doesn't take too much time from the AFRIS colleagues to introduce to this tool. So, um, next week or um, the week after the first week of March uh, will be an active one of that regard to bring this process uh, on track um, so that we will um, have defined this uh, West Africa EU Alliance process and have uh, first opportunities uh, to start a common program by the end of next year. So the what I would like to remind you at the end of this meeting is please share addresses of further working group members. And if you are not um, uh, listed in those lists that I showed uh, to you before, which is this one for working group number one, for working group number two, it is that one, and for working group number three, wait, this was three, two, and one, if you are not listed here and you want to join uh, the work in this working group, uh, please inform us um, right now after this meeting. If you have uh, other institutions where you would say they are important, they can contribute. And, and first of all, they want to contribute. They are committed. They have something to say. They have knowledge. They have experiences or they have good questions. Uh, please suggest them. We will address them and we will include them into these working groups. But please be careful. We are not looking for a big quantity of partners, but for um, high quality partners in that sense that they are committed and knowledgeable and then that they can contribute here. Um, again, a reminder, uh, we have a lack of European institutions uh, in these working groups. Um, and I hope very much before end of next week, uh, we will have some further suggestions also about that. Please all feel free to contribute here. Um, in that sense, um, allow me to uh, close this session here. We are just a little bit uh, over the time. Uh, it was very interesting to discuss with you, to hear the presentations. Um, we will have uh, further workshops like that. I think this is one of the um, um, effects of the pandemic uh, that we will meet more often in these virtual uh, meetings. And I must say, I start appreciating that uh, instead of organizing uh, physical meetings, uh, uh, which consume a lot of time and money, but we still need them. We hope perhaps at the end of the year that we can meet in the context uh, of the West Africa EU Alliance, perhaps um, in the context of uh, this common workshop uh, in December, but let's see what the time will bring. Uh, until then, uh, we will continue working in this uh, virtual spheres with virtual meetings via AFRIS. Um, and uh, in the name of not only the Work Package 2 team from Leap for FNSSA, but also the other partners uh, from Leap for FNSSA, I'm not sure whether you can see them currently here in my last slide. Uh, I want to thank you for uh, this meeting, for your patience, for your commitment and your passion to contribute here. Uh, we will stay in contact uh, in the next days. Um, and uh, once we all have access to AFRIS, um, we will also stop uh, sharing uh, each and every document uh, via email. It will be more comfortable and then you will find uh, in AFRIS, um, for example, uh, concepts and agendas for meetings, but also the working documents and um, all uh, material that we will produce here. So in that sense, colleagues, have a lovely afternoon. Thank you very much for joining this meeting and we will stay in contact. Take good care and stay healthy. Bye. Bye, Bye. Stefan. Thank you, Stefan. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.